Welcome back. Episode 25, Smoke and Mirrors. How are we feeling there, fellas? Yeah, good, we big good? dogs. Feeling really, really good. good. Yeah. Really good uh, quarter century there. Really, really, really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Johnny Five is Alive episode. How are you going? I'm good. I'm good. We just got a, we got a nice little uh, extra log. Uh, package for you, Paul. Yeah, that's it. We got big news. We got a lot of news today, guys. So just hang in there. Big tings. Lots of tings in the works. <laughs> there is tings in the action. Yeah. <laughs> Strange tings. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So who's starting us off? Uh, uh, Clive Clive Barker's joining the Hellraiser um, mm. uh, series at HBO Max. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um. So he's joining Michael Doherty, who's already on board. He's gonna um, Doherty <laughs> develop the shit out of um, out of the material. Fuck yeah! Um, I'm excited about this, man. Yeah, like, like as as for me, as soon as uh, Barker jumped on board, I was like, yeah. all right, cool, yeah, cool. So they're they're actually gonna get sign off and whatnot for all this bullshit that they're gonna do. I hope so, man. Yeah, because more like getting closer to that Hellraiser feel of the original. Yeah, yeah. that'd be nuts. Yeah. I'd like to see um, less CG, more of like the the real shit that they put into those original films. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. I think with with like what what they've done with um, say, uh, Walking Dead or something like that. Like mm. you know, with, with practical effects, the way that they are, pe- people appreciate practical effects now a lot because of those sort of shows. So that yeah. should transfer across. I just yeah. don't want the unnecessary lengthening of the show. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I don't want it to be like The Walking Dead, where now it's just played out and it's just, it's just on. I, yeah. I tried watching Walking Dead not too long ago. I just couldn't do it. Walking Dead is light. It's too much shit spread across too much bread. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it's running out. It's like <laughs> it's fucking ice cold butter. And it's just <laughs> ripping that bread. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I hope I hope it's a limited series. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's just jam packed with with a lot of the lore and and um, a lot of the feeling. Mm. Mm. Got to have feels. I'm hoping just, it's it is a series. So. Yeah. yeah, not like uh, Books of Blood, which should have been a series. Yeah. yeah, if Books of Blood was anthology series, yeah. fire. If fire. they just did like hour, hour and a half, four episode miniseries. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <clears throat> Just, but I heard uh, that they're going to delve into like how Pinhead was like his origin and all that sort of stuff in this one. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Because it looks like they're like that's the new fountain that they're, they're drinking from now is going into the origins. Yeah. 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 Because you get like a brief glimpse yeah. in two, but you don't see how he got up to finding the cube. Mm. Just mm. like the pins getting fucking hammered into him. Yeah. Pause. Do you um, think we get Doug Bradley back? Fuck, I hope so. I hope so. Even even it's if it's in up, another it. another part. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah. The yeah. Doug Bradley's getting on. He is, but like he's kind of getting the turkey neck as well. Yeah, but it's all makeup, guys. Like you yeah. wouldn't you it'd it'd look like it'd be like Farrell. They just put dog clips on the back of his neck yeah. to fucking stretch <laughs> like it. Every out. everything is covered. <laughs> so he could get him back. Yeah. You need True. that voice. Um, I, I would like him back, even if he dubs the O. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be cool if you did dub him. Doug Bradley still has so many shites, uh, sites to show. <laughs> shites <Yeah>. to show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so moving on, we've got um, we've got we we saw concept art for um the new Gremlins that's going to come out. It's an animated series. Yeah, it's going to follow uh, Mr. Wing and how he found uh, Gizmo. Yeah, a ten-year-old Mr. Wing. Ten-year-old Mr. Wing. Yeah, running around the streets of Shanghai in nineteen twenties. Fucking fire. Mm. You must have been under the wing of another master. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sounds like it's just him and like other kids. Yeah. And then Gizmo. And then they find other monsters. Yeah. Um, and creatures along the um, the Chinese countryside. That's mad. Mm. They go on like a little bit of a tour. That'd be yeah. cool, man. We get get a little of that, uh, like to see some of the Chinese monsters and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Which we don't really get to see. No. Yeah. yeah. Do we need it though? Like in the lore of, of Gremlins and, and Gizmo. We don't really need it, but like we don't need it, but it's nice to see. It's a nice to have, yeah. and it's a kid show. It's, it's coming age to be a max. I think it's it's them gearing kids towards like more Gremlins content, and then we'll eventually get a Gremlins movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which, who yeah, who directed Gremlins? 
Uh, Joe Dante. Dante. I reckon Dante is probably over there setting something up already. Well, he, he did try. There has been a Gremlins 3 in the works for a while. Yeah. But they're just like, they've never moved on it. Yeah. But if you look at the escalation from the first Gremlins to the second Gremlins, Massive. it just got fucking bigger. It's huge. Um, it was. So like three would be like a world domination plot or something like that. Yeah. And there'd be like a hundred gremlins. I reckon they practical on screen. If if they if they reel it back a little bit and just keep it in like a small town like the like the first one, I reckon it'd be fire. That'd be mad if they relaunched it like that. Yeah. Still a sequel, yeah. But like relaunched it. Mm. Would have been mad if it was coming out around now, like with, with the election happening and they have a gremlin as a president. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. That would be cool, especially if it was a Trump gremlin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're a loser. I want to kill you. Would you <laughs> shut up, man? Listen, who- <laughs> <laughs> um, so Speaking was, yeah. of the election. Nice. Cool. I see you tee it up there. I see it all. <laughs> Use your mind's eye, man. But um, Chappelle, much like in 2016, he's hosting the post-election episode of Saturday Night Live. Mm. Yeah. When the election gets wrapped up, because there's yeah. been a lot of bullshit. Fucking if it gets wrapped up. <laughs> <laughs> I demand a recount. Um, yeah, we'll see. See yeah. what Sleepy Joe's got a got up his sleeves. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Sophie Turner is uh, is joining a um, joining the animated series at HBO Max called The Princess. It's a it's like a um, satirized version of the Royals. Okay. Okay. So she will be playing Princess Charlotte. Mm-hmm. So it'll follow um, uh, Prince William and Kate Kate Middleton's mm-hmm. um, kids, but more specifically their son. So it'll be the Royals through the eyes of their son, Prince. Does Mans have two sons? No, he's got, I think he's got a son and a daughter, doesn't he? Because Princess Charlotte is the daughter. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't keep up on Royals um, news yeah. and shit like that. I yeah. see it at the shopping center where it's like uh, Meghan Markle is fucking Prince Charles or some shit like I that. Know, yeah. so, I don't stay up to date on Royals news. Yeah, that's news I'd like to keep in touch <laughs> of. <though. laughs> that Meghan Markle is something else. <laughs> so we got um, we got a new trailer for The Witcher. But yeah. it was it was in the Halloween spirit, yeah. So we'd usually include it in our um, our trailer section, but it it showed two new monsters mm-hmm. um, for season two. Yep, this is the first glimpse that we kind of we kind of get. Yeah. So we we only got two. The re- the rest of it was from season one, but still, yeah. Two new monsters. I like yeah. that. It's always yeah. good to have Monster Mash because I always think of The Simpsons. I oh, know. You didn't yeah. change the song, did you? <laughs> <laughs> you did it again, didn't you? <laughs> uh, so Sony's also looking to get into the anime um, uh, game. Mm. So they're, they're looking to purchase Crunchyroll from AT&T. So now we see it on HBO Max. Yeah. Um, as as one of the the entities that that they stream, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but they they're putting that out to pasture, and they were looking for a hundred no one point five billion dollars. Well, they they bought it for one point five billion. Who AT and T AT and T did, but now the the going price is nine sixty. Well, that's what Sony's offering. <laughs> <laughs> I see you. This, on this is what we got on the table. That's it. <laughs> Um, so I don't, I don't know if Crunchyroll's actually been like, uh, like, you know, doing really well. They, they've been making, um, so I think they're one of the very few anime, uh, streaming services to actually have originals mm. under their banner. Um, very much so where a lot of things like, so there's Funimation, which used to be part of anime lab, but then they mm. separated. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the original content that you'll see for new anime is under Crunchyroll. Things like Megalobox, God of High School, things like that. Okay. Nice. Very nice. Uh, I don't really care. <laughs> like Sony doesn't have their own streaming service, so it's not like they're, they're buying it for their own platform. You know they, what I mean? They don't have one? No. Nah. They Ooh. So Sony's one of the few studios that actually um, like- They make more money. They lend it out. Lending it out. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Hmm. Yeah. And we also have um, news of Christopher Walken. He's actually joining the cast of an Apple series named Severance. Yeah. Um, I forgot what the show's about. So, so go on. 
Oh, sorry. I was going to say it's based in an office setting. Yes. Yeah. And they're aiming to to take work life balance to the next level. Yeah. Um, and then something seems off with the main character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, the main character he's, he's got one of them sordid pasts. Did something back in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's jaded like Caruso in Jade. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd watch it. Apparently, it's Chris Walken's first. Um, TV appearance since playing uh, Captain Hook in in the live Peter Pan yeah. um, 2014 yeah. edition. We got Fucking Totoro in there as well. So yeah, Should I didn't be know good. he was Hook. Yeah, yeah. Walking was Hook. Mm. I got to see that. Would have been hilarious, yeah. actually. <laughs> Peter. <been> cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had um some. Uh, who was it? Uh, what's his name? Sarandon. No. The dude from Stranger Things. What's his name? Doffer. David Harbour. No, 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 no. One of the producers. Um, yeah, Sean Levy. Sean Levy. Yeah. yeah. Sean Levy came out and he was talking about the the Stranger Things delays, right? So yeah. it, it was indefinitely delayed because of um the virus. But um he said that the Duffer brothers are actually really liking. They they enjoyed the delays simply because it actually gave them time to to um to write all of the scripts mm, so before production started. Before production started. So I'm I'm thinking that, you know, they would start their their season with like maybe one or three scripts. Yeah. And then in between there they'd be shooting and fucking writing at the same time. Just yeah. fucking wild. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you got to piece together that story at the end. Yeah. Um what they 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 really enjoyed the 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 delay and they they really polished up these these scripts. Yeah. So they got a chance to write the whole season. They can see the whole thing play out. That's nuts, man. Unbelievable. Yeah. Do you reckon um the Duffer brothers will now take this opportunity and like sort of take that risk, even though the kids aren't growing up, to do a season every two years instead of just every year we get one? As for me, I, I wouldn't mind that mm. Mm. as long as they make it known in the show that it's been two years. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of like the kids are still 14. I know. <laughs> it's like, like fucking Grease out here. <laughs> they they had hair. fucking facial hair. <laughs> Man's was as old as me. And he was playing a 17 year old. <laughs> fucking wild. <laughs> so was Machio though. Yeah. Machio was 24 years old playing a 15 year old. Yeah. Yeah. But he still looked and sounded like. Yeah. 15. Like our brother. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm excited for Stranger Things, man. Same. Like I, I'm like really looking forward to it. So I hope, I hope with it, like, like we, we get um, something that's, that's well better than we've seen before. Like I've liked every season before. That third season was fucking fire. I still haven't watched it. I need to fucking get on that. But we, we might get the best season so far. Could be. It could be the best. <laughs> um but we've we've uh so we've we've seen a lot of movies streaming mm-hmm. this year yep. um because of the pandemic. Right. Um and now there's a list out of the most streamed movies in 2020. Yep. So at the top of that list. What are we doing? Yep. At the top of that list was Hamilton. Yep. For for oh. Disney Plus. Yep. Yep. And then second was Borat, which is wild. Yeah. Just came out last week. Yep. Yeah. Um, that's sitting at number two. Then we add with number three was My Spy with uh, Dave Bautista. Oh, that's yeah. crazy to me. Yeah. yeah. Which is weird. And then Extraction, obviously, with the Hemsworth. The Hemsworth. Boy. Sam Harm, Hargrave action mm-hmm. epic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we got Phineas and Ferb, the movie, which I think is on Disney Plus as well. Yes. Yes. Yep. Then we had Mulan. Yeah. Right? Which is number six. Yeah. So even though like all the rest of these movies was out just on the streaming service. Yeah. Now Mulan came out with a thirty dollar fucking price tag and it still became number six. Yeah. With so much controversy and bullshit uh-huh. surrounding it. Um so to me that's a hit for Disney. That's a massive hit. That that's an indicator for Disney to be like, hey. This is Mulan. Yeah. And this came out with all the controversy. If you were to release Black Widow, 
Yeah. Mm. On your streaming service for 30 fucking dollars, I would buy that shit every week for the next foot for until it comes out and fucking. Yeah. Like streaming properly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's crazy, right? Because Disney did that on their service. They also let Apple have a piece of it. Google movies, they did. you know what I mean? So that would also factor into this number two. Mm-hmm. Um, number two. And then to, to round out that list, we've got the old guard at seven, the trial of the Chicago seven at eight. Um, we got the witches at nine and then the lovebirds at 10. The love. The I never heard of the lovebirds I never heard to be of honest. Either. Um, but like you know, they they were talking about how Netflix isn't in the, they weren't in the top three, right? But they got like three or four. They titles got three or four there. titles in. Yeah, if you look at like the whole list, like it's literally nearly all Netflix stuff. Yeah, so they're cheering right now. Yeah, <laughs> Netflix does it right. Yeah, <laughs> like they might not have the top spot, but they're consistently. Performing. Consistently performing. We've got literally just in that seven, one, two, three, four, four out of ten is damn good, man. I occupied 40% of the top ten list of streaming movies. Yeah, exactly. That's fucking crazy to me, man. Yeah. It's massive. Mm -hmm. Um, So... Amazon is actually um, has greenlit this um, six part limited series called The Rig. Mm. Yep, it's a, it's a horror show. Yep, or series, okay. um, and it's it's about these guys working on this oil rig isolated from everything else. And when they're supposed to depart, um, they act a fog sets in, a mysterious fog, a mist, um, and through that, it starts. Um, like this chain reaction, like the mist of people panicking, yep. people like, you know, burning bridges and creating these, um, these massive gaps between each other yep. and other allegiances mm-hmm. and the, the backstabbing and bullshit and everything, the plotting and scheming. Yeah. It's, it's the thing on a boat. Yeah. With mist. Yeah. Or the fog. Which is also <laughs> what's his face movie? <laughs> the foggy, misty thing. But in, but in the fog, then pirates came out. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Walking underwater. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for this, I'm man. Excited, this man. sounds good. Yeah, yeah, um, I like this. I like, I, 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 I like the horror limited series. Same. Yeah. Like to me, that's fire. Mm. Yeah, I'm about that life. Mm. But, um, right. We also have Numi Rapaci. And she's um, set to lead um, in a film called Black Crab. Now, this is from a, a Swedish writer, uh, Jörka Vinborg, who wrote the actual novel for this film, which is being adapted. That's the word I'm looking for. And the cool thing is that's also Numi Rupachi's, um, I could come back to her home country to actually make yeah. it. Yeah. But this sounds fucking mad as well. Yeah. So essentially it's in a post-apocalyptic world. Mm-hmm. And these six soldiers have this mission to actually deliver this thing that could end the war. The bomb. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> they've been in like a nuclear winter or something yeah, like yeah. that. Endless winter. Yeah. Fucking crazy. So they have to go across the frozen sea to actually get to this location where they can deliver this thing. Yeah. Fire. Um, I don't know. I just thought about Boston crap. <laughs> 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 um, this sounds good, man. Yeah. It sounds good. I'm excited. I'll watch it. It's funny how I we're mean, getting all these movies now, eh? Is this how the COVID sort of impacts then? Right? What do you mean? Well, if, if you have a movie like this, this movie is the same as the, uh, fuck, Ocean's Eleven guy, Clooney. Same uh, as Clooney's movie. Yeah. Sort of. Really the winter. Really winter, tight cast. Yeah, keep it down. Keep the numbers down. Uh, yeah, right, right, right. desolate environment. Yeah, yeah. Open, wide open spaces. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so much shit can happen. Mm. Like, yeah, always think of fuck. What's that Mads Mikkelsen movie? It's on the tip of my tongue. Pause. Um, the Viking one. Yeah, where it was Valhalla like a, Rising. Valhalla, Valhalla yeah, Rising. Where it's like a small cast and it's just very intense and just really fucked up. Yeah, as well. yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't mind those movies. Yeah. Same. I don't mind them at all. Like. Like I think this might be the 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 sort of um, environment that we were waiting for. Yeah. Weirdly, 
mm. um, to actually enjoy these more sort of these smaller movies. Yeah. 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 Even if they're smaller movies done with a bigger budget. I'm, I don't mind I'm, it. I'm liking the fact that they're thinking outside of the box now. It's yeah. like, oh, okay, fuck, we can't do like, you know, add, like just heavy crowds and all that sort of shit. Yeah. Just cut it back a little bit. All right, cool. This is yeah. what we're going to do. That's what I'm liking. Yeah. Because yeah. now the movie doesn't have to end in a big city battle. God. In the stadium. On the fucking streets. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. It's um, fucking thing. battle LA <laughs> <laughs> where we're pulling away from spectacle and actually leaning heavily in towards our content for yeah. um, just a small crowd. Mm. That's it. Um, Zach Efron mm-hmm. is getting it in. So he's actually in Australia. Uh, he's been in Australia for a while. I think he'd have to be right. Like with the, with the pandemic, with the pandemic. Um, and like he's, he's even hooked up with Aussie check everything. Oh yeah. Um, so, He's going to be in this movie called Gold, yep. set in Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's two friends who are going um, across. Uh, backpacking through, yeah. through Oz. Um, and they're in, I think, Darwin or something, or, or Central Australia in yeah. the desert. In the desert, yeah. And um, they find the biggest gold nugget ever. So then Efron's like, I'll stay here and I'll watch the nugget so nobody yep. else claims it. And his friend journeys out to go get help and assistance to like retrieve this thing. Yeah. Only for Efron to go fucking crazy, wondering if his friends just <laughs> left him in the dust. <laughs> um, it, it sounds like it could be pretty intense. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like 127 hours and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Right. But yeah. he's free. But, but he's, he's like he's running out of water. The savage dingoes like yeah. like ready to take him down. Yeah. It should be it should be good, man. It should be good. The weather as well is, is yeah. it will be a mess up. I mean, it 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 can go from like forty five to I don't know what forty five degrees is in fucking American guys. Uh, it's so like one hundred and ten. Yeah, up to one hundred and ten Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit, down to like nearly zero in the desert here. Yeah, so, yeah, that's gonna be crazy. Yeah, I'm excited for it. it should be I'm, good, I'm man. liking Efron. Like Efron's like kind of emerging as as a serious actor. Yeah, yeah. He's getting away from High School Musical. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's yeah. I I think he, you know, with with the uh, the the Bundy. Was it the Bundy? Was it Bundy? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, uh, Ted, Ted Bundy. Bundy. That yeah, incredibly the, wicked, dark, yeah. and yeah. brutal or whatever. Yeah. I, don't, I yeah. don't know the title. Netflix. Yeah, with the with the Bundy, and then this, and then like more of the adult sort of stuff that he's doing. Yeah. Yep. I think he's getting into his bag. I think he wants to, you know, start becoming an actor. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. he's killing that old part of himself yeah. for the uh, F Renaissance. Yeah. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Trademark bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag fucking everything. <laughs> sort of like Elijah Wood mm. when he did Maniac after fucking Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And totally, and completely City. changed his image. Yeah. 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 Fucking hell. Um, so... Hulu is canceling Castle Rock. Damn, man. this is a shame because I actually enjoyed Castle Rock. Yeah, yeah. I only watched the first season. I'm I'm looking to to get into that second season because yeah. it, it deals with Annie Wilkes, the fucking misery chick. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah. the main character. Lizzie Kaplan plays her. Um, but I'm I'm keen to to watch the second season. You fucking baby killer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like I, I was kind of disappointed that Andre Holland, yeah, wasn't coming back for that that second. But yeah, you know, I like that guy too. He's cool, man. He's good. Yeah, yeah. really, really good. Good value. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, this next this next article is rough. It because, is. It um, is kind of rough. Yeah. Uh, you you don't know how to feel, in a way. Yeah. Um, so prominent members of the uh, the disability community and the Paralympic Games have um, have condemned the recent adaptation of Roald Dahl's The Witches yeah. because of um, the way that the witch's hands are portrayed. So in the book, the witch's hands, are, like they have five fingers, they're just clawed. 
Yeah, they do. Right? They're clawed and they wear gloves all the time. Yeah, to yeah, cover it up. To cover it up. Um, but in the Rob's, uh, uh, Robert Zemeckis um, adaptation that just came out, <laughs> the fucking Rob Zombie adaptation, <laughs> <laughs> it did get pretty scary. But they've they've only got three fingers. Yeah, um, and it's very very similar to um, the disability called ectrodactyly. Yeah, yeah, um, which are the same. So. What what they've kind of said is, uh, is this the kind of message we want the next generation to receive, that having three fingers is a witch's attribute? It's an extremely damaging portrayal. Disability should not be associated with evil, abnormality, disgust, fear, or monsters. Mm. Which I agree with. That statement is 100% true. 100%. In my mind, do I believe that that's what Zemeckis and um, Del Toro were replicating to to inspire fear of these witches? No. No. I don't believe that at all. No. Um, I don't think that that was the um the intention that they had. So mm. um WB came back, so a spokeswoman said, we're deeply sad saddened to learn that our depiction of the fictional characters and the witches could upset people with disabilities mm. and that it regretted any offense caused. I also think that that WB don't believe that that was the intention behind no. it as well. No, not at all. Um, and the creative, the creative choice. Uh, and, and that's why it kind of feels like they kind of said, well, they did say that they're fictional characters. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Uh, everything's based in fiction. The, like the, the hands were a small part. Yeah. Of the movie. Mm -hmm. Like there, there were different things that they, that they did, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To, to just make them as otherworldly as possible. Right. That's out of the norm. Yeah. I don't know if, um, ectrodactyly is, is a, um, a major disability. Like that, like a widespread disability, you know what I mean? That people would know about it. I don't, yeah. I, I wouldn't say widespread. I'd say wide. Widely known about, yeah. So widely I, that, known. That was That's that was I mean. that was the first time I, mm. I heard of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, to me, it it didn't feel like they were focusing on the hands that much. No, the no. scenes where it's it's in play, um, but I don't I don't think that it was the intention of Zemeckis and Del Toro to actually just shit no. on a whole uh, a group of of people. No, no, not at all. I don't. I mean, it was, it's never the intention. Yeah, but this this would happen, right? I mean, they they changed up the way they they were gonna, you know, show the witches how they were. Yeah. They changed that up. They didn't want to go for the regular, you know, okay, the claws and then the the flat toes and whatnot and yeah. all that sort of stuff. So yeah, yeah. The same article also said that the witches was was widely panned for what the. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand know, that. I don't either. understand that. Um, but I don't. I don't think that that plays into the fucking story at all. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, I I think we can be really sensitive sometimes when we see something like that. It's very very reactionary. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Like we don't we don't. It's it's very reactionary. We don't think about you know, the the after effects. Yeah. Right. So oh fuck, I'm angry now, and then you realize that. Well, that wasn't that wasn't the intent. It was like, yeah. okay, so you you can't exactly take that back. Yeah, yeah, your reaction. Yeah, so um, I don't know how to feel. I hope they work that shit out. Mm. To yeah. be honest, same. Speaking about reactions, we've got big, big reactions. Mm. Chemical reactions. Mm. Jesus, <laughs> things were arising along <laughs> with rumors. <laughs> All right. So um, if you guys haven't watched Mando, please fucking watch it. If you like, if, if you haven't watched it, skip past for the next, I don't know, three minutes, three minutes. Um, <laughs> you've been warmed. <laughs> um, Boba Fett shows up at the end of the first episode of, of Mando. Yeah. Right. So within, within that Mando story, um, he's journeying to go find more Mandalorians. They tell him, Hey, on Tatooine, there's one. Yeah. Um, we see, um, what looks like Boba Fett, a really skinny Boba Fett show up. Mm. Um, it's not Boba Fett. It's Timothy Oliphant wearing Boba Fett's suit. Yeah. Right. So yeah, everything happens. 
at the end of the episode, we get to see Temawera Morrison, my guy, walking in the wind, walking in the wind, turns around. It's Boba. Yeah. And it was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of looks like the bad O in uh, Iron Man, the Ten Rings leader at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say he's leaned down a lot. Yeah. He has. Tomorrow, yeah. Well, I mean, he, he's he's jumped from DC to to Marvel now. Oh, DC, yeah, Disney. Disney. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. D's nuts. <laughs> um, and, and off the back of that, we, we heard that there, there's, you know, there could be a mini series starting as soon as next week. Yeah. Like f- starting, starting filming. Filming next week, which is fucking awesome, man. So do we assume that it's a prequel series? I think it's just. Or, or is it a sequel series? So he must get the armor back. I so think he, yeah. Through the course of the story, um, like they must meet up. Cool. Through the course of the story, we're going to get uh, what's his face come back? Obi Wan. We'll see Obi Wan. Potentially. Potentially. Yeah. Hopefully. And we'll see Boba. Because mm, now on. they're introducing the Jedi and, and yeah, the Sith as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. But Obi Wan would obviously have to come back as a Force Ghost, though. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made that mistake. Yeah, but yeah, I can't wait, man. Same. Yeah, I want to. I, I need to know how they explained him getting out of the silo. Well, that's that's what I was saying about which timeline will they choose to to follow in the show if it is happening, mm. right? Will it be just based in? him getting out of the Sarlacc pit yeah. or will it be a sequel story that like goes back and forth? That'd be mad. Cause I'd, I'd kind of like to see Boba moving forward, but also how we got into those sort of well, positions. If, if like, I mean, if, <laughs> if, if we're talking about him, he's going to have to get out of the Sarlacc, right? His arm is going to be all fucked up. Yeah. He's probably going to get robbed by a couple of fucking Jawas. Well, because they have his suit. I, I think he's um is he renouncing his he, maybe he does renounce it. Wow. Because he'd ha- well that's he should die then. Don't they die? They they need to die. They, they get put to death if they take off their uh, their helmets. I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but like Well that's what Pascal says at the end of season one. Does he say you have to die? No one's allowed to see my face or I face the consequences. This is the way or some shit. Okay. Yeah. So you either die or you get exiled. Probably exiled. His face is a little fucked up though. Yeah. He's really, really, really scarred up. Mm. It just like how much time has there been in between him escaping and him being where he is now as well? True. Because both of those like, that happened in Return of the Jedi, and then Mando takes place after Return of the Jedi. Yeah. yeah. Or during Return of the Jedi. After. After. Okay. It's in between, yeah. Because as soon as they in that in that first episode, they said as soon as the, the Death Star was destroyed for the second time, those the uh, that's right. the pillaging and raping yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I fucking love that. When the Death Star was destroyed for the second time. <laughs> All fun's so fucking cool. I know, man. Yeah. I hope we get to see his character more. Same. Yeah. Um, so Netflix is is as as kind of uh, you know taking us on as advisors. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nah, being like we're we're making big moves in the in the Netflix business model. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not giving ideas away for free. That's it. Um, but that's that's what we do. The great <laughs> the greatness is here. It's on play all the time. Um, so why wouldn't you uh, you know drink from that well? That's it. Um, so I expect that check in the mail um, <laughs> because the <a> check. <laughs> Netflix is introducing a linear twenty four seven curated content channel. Um, something that we talked about as a possibility for streaming services. Fucking now. months ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it'll be called Direct. It'll be um, offered through their official website. So what, what they're doing is they're trialing it in France because France is still this big group that um, still uh, views content in that way. Yeah. So they they, they still, still they still watch TV. Yeah. Nine million over there. They still watch TV. Mm. 
They haven't adopted streaming yet, which makes me think. Like sometimes it's just because France might just have really shit internet. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Netflix, I mean, you can address uh, the check to the O's um, in Sydney, Australia. And I will um, get what is owed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I think we're, we're um, influencing your. We your- even gave you the fucking name. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> like, honestly, I don't want to check. I just want them to give me 3% of their proceeds of all their subscriptions. Fuck that. I want, I want 3% of your fucking stock. <laughs> <laughs> Every <too>. month. <laughs> um, but yeah. Tell Spider-Man. <laughs> That's all right. I might, I might actually just change my, um, my LinkedIn details to senior advisor at Netflix know, for man. marketing and strategy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right and that 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 was all the streaming news we had a lot of streaming news so enjoy it um netflix we're going to be charging you a fee for every time we mention the word netflix Mm -hmm. fucking find his fee (laughs) (laughs) uh all right so moving into film news Mm. we actually got we got a shitload of film news yeah it's been been really um streaming news heavy yeah and production sort of lately yeah Got a lot of film. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, so Sigourney Weaver and Rooney Mara are um, co-starring in a movie by Phyllis Nagy um, called Cole Jane. Yeah. Um, so Sigourney Weaver will play Jane, mm-hmm. um, who is an underground. Um, she runs an underground abortion clinic, abortion clinic. Um, which Rooney Mara attends. Mm. So when she attends it, like she, she kind of gets caught up in that world and then she becomes an advocate yep. for uh, women now being able to take um, control of their bodies and their yep. destinies. Mm-hmm. Um, sounds like a, a, a big drama. Yeah. I mean, this won't be a comedy. I can't no. wait. I, I, this, this sounds fucking cool, this movie. I will watch the shit out of this. <laughs> there's, there's, there's been content out about um, like, you know, abortionists and whatnot that I think the most hated woman in America. Yeah. Who was like pro abortion. Well, there's no one better to take on this role as well as Sigourney. Yeah. 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 Um, but it, like it, it triggers people. Oh. Yeah. This topic triggers people. Yeah. So for, for me, it's, it's whatever the woman wants to do. Like that baby isn't growing inside me. Like, yeah, that's completely her decision. Yeah, that's that's how I see it. That's my view. I'm not even going to get into politics. This ain't my bag at all. Yeah, no, at all. I will just fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to cause like no fucking uproars and shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, Justin Chan is coming through with Blue Bayou in summer 2021. Who the fuck is Justin Chan? I don't know. Is that how you pronounce it? Chon? Chon? It's not Sean. I don't know. I'm um, pretty sure it's, it's Chon. Um, so what is Blue Bayou? I didn't read this one. I didn't catch up on what Blue Bayou is. By the Blue, Blue Bayou. Bayou. <laughs> Blue Bayou. Oh, this guy was in Twilight. Okay. What's he got on it? Oh, sorry, I was looking at his fucking IMDb for a second. <laughs> I was stalking. <laughs> but I don't have the news up for Blue Bayou at all yet. Either way, it's coming out 2021. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, moving on. All yeah. right, so we got The Strange Talent of Luther Strode to go from, um, it's going to go from a comic book mm-hmm. to now being adapted into a film. A big it's, screen film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought I thought it was gonna be being a comic. I thought it was gonna yeah. be like you know the the show, the limited series, yeah. the Netflix. Um, but it's actually going to film. So it's it's about um, this kid that uh, he writes in to get a a copy of um, this handbook, this magician's yep. handbook. Yeah. Yep. And then this cult sends it to him, but it's one of the <laughs> oldest manuscripts of mankind that details um, dark magic. That's bad. Um, so when he he gets into it and starts following the practices, thinking it's a it's something for magicians. Yep. Starting up, 
he starts noticing he has more violent tendencies and, and, um, his, his way of thinking is starting to change. I thought it was like a full on, like the bro, the brother of Laurie Strode or some shit like that. Yeah. That continuation. When I saw it, I was like, Luther Strode. <laughs> Cause Strode, Strode isn't like a, a, a wide used no. fucking last name. You I'd, know what I'd I mean? I'd love to know where, what's his face came up with that. Yeah. You probably have Carpenter. that Halloween influence. Yeah. Um, yeah. This guy that wrote it. Mm. Um, yeah. So I don't know if he like just goes into like really dark territory. It just goes into kill mode. Yeah. That'd be weird. Yeah. Cause he, he is like a teenage kid. It sounds like that, that anime. What's it called? Death Note. Yeah. Yeah. Black Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Bible black. <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, we got um Dave Batista. So he's um he's he's joining this film called Universe's Most Wanted. Right? So he's a bounty hunter for the universe. Mm-hmm. And um these guys crash land on Earth and so does he and he's gotta round them up. Monster Wrangler. Yeah. Alien Wrangler. Yeah. He also joins forces with the sheriff's son or some shit like that. Yeah. Who who wasn't very well liked and then becomes very well liked. It's a bit of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. It's Batista. Let's see what he has to do. It sounds like fun. If it's got a budget behind it. Yeah. Like it sounds like a blockbuster movie. Yeah. And if it's like, I, I don't know if it's Thurgood again or that other guy. That the Rock always works with. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's um, Brad Payton. Payton, yeah. same O that did um, San Andreas. Yeah, yeah. So it's so going to be big and it's Rampage. Be big. Isn't it? Yeah, I think he did Rampage as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 definitely going to be big. Yeah. So it, Brad Payton only works with wrestlers. Yeah. Uh, Danny Trejo is joining American Sicario, which will detail the um, American Mexican um, gang member. And cartel leader, mm. La Barbie. <laughs> or The Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> Jack and that O gets a lot of shrimps thrown at him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in America, because we're going to fucking call him, either call him that here in, in Australia. It's fucking prawn champion. <laughs> um, so Danny Trejo is actually going to play The Barbie's wife's father. Yeah. That's how we get there. That's what's happening. Mm-hmm. That's the tree. That is the tree. And the base, which yeah. is also called the soul. Or the root. <laughs> Shit. That's but yeah, so, so this is all set in prison as well. So this, it, like he, the Barbie goes to prison and everything and then <laughs> shit goes down. <laughs> yeah, it sounds um, like a fucking preschool song. Yeah. The Barbie goes to prison <laughs> and <laughs> shit goes down. Man's in prison, dude's like, I'll be your kin. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get shivved. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of soul, uh, we have Offset to join American Soul alongside Pete Davidson and O'Shea Jackson Jr. or mm. Ice Cube Mini, as I like to call him. Yeah. Um, so the story is basically Offset is an IT specialist and he has two undergrads. Is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah. yeah they, they're think? all undergrads. Yeah. 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 But they're, they're trying to start that business. Yeah. Yeah, and the undergrads of Davidson and O'Shea. Yeah, O'Shea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they're they're uh, looking into the um, the reselling of sneakers. Yeah. yeah, aftermarket sale. Yeah, I thought there was something that came out around this. I thought there was as well. I find Pete Davidson so awkward. Don't you? Yeah. Like I watched his stand up and then he's like always doing that <laughs> laugh and it fucking it just puts me off, hey. <laughs> That's <laughs> fucked. Um but yeah, I, I like the topic. I'll watch it. I like O'Shea Jackson Jr. as well. Yeah. Um he shows a vulnerability that Ice Cube seldom shows. Well, I think he's he's For more me. more of an actor than his dad. Like he, mm. he's chosen one like sort of one sort of artistic representation and that's that's acting. He's Don't not out there wrong. doing music and, and all that other stuff. But when Ice Cube wants to put on the fucking juice, he can. Yeah. yeah. When he wants to. He even did that fucking acting lesson on Three Kings. That's fucking acting. <laughs> <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm disgusted with you. <laughs> you was just Ice Cube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking yeah. 
We have um, Tom Hardy, and he's set for a lead role in Rupert Santa's new film, The Things They Carried. Yeah. Uh, so this one's pretty cool. Um, so essentially what it is is that uh, it's the stories about the platoon of young soldiers of Alpha Company. Yeah. And their experiences on the front lines. Yeah. yeah. So th- this will also detail um, like the mental, physical, and emotional um, struggles that they went through. Yeah, the set in set in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it? Uh, do, 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 it didn't doesn't say. It didn't specify which war. Oh, um, they but, are shooting in Thailand, so maybe. Yeah, yeah. There's it a, is then. <laughs> but there's there's a big cast associated with the this massive as well. This one, yeah. Um, what's what's the cast? Then? So we got uh, Ty Sheridan. Mm. Yeah, uh, Stephen James. Okay. Stephen James, because A, hey, Bill Skarsgård, Pete Davidson again, Ashton Sanders, Martin Sensmeyer, Moises Arias, and Angus Cloud. Okay. And there's still more to come as well. Shit. Pause. Yeah, that's big, man. Get my guy. What's his face on that on that one? John Marsden? John. Is James name? Marsden? No, 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 no. The black guy from, uh, what's his face? John Majors? Yeah. To get John Majors on there. Be back. Tick. Yeah. He'll be back in Vietnam. And we're back, baby. Um, so Ty West has a new film coming out called X. It's not the uh, the DMX uh, biopic. <laughs> X, I'll give it to you. Um, nah, what I wish it was. <laughs> so it's 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 under wraps. Um, okay, what the the plot details are. Um, Ty West did um, the Innkeepers. I don't know if you guys ever watched that. No, no. Um, any good? It was all right. It was all right. It wasn't yeah. the greatest thing, but okay. yeah, I watched it. It was there. Yeah. So X is his new film. Okay. So or ten, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> what if it's Roman Roman numerals? Yeah. Like yeah. in the Roman times. What if the do fucking the Romans trailer? do? <laughs> what if the fucking trailer starts for this and X by exhibit stop playing? Be mad X. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we also got um, Neil Marshall. Yeah. So he's, he's set to direct and produce his new horror action thriller called The Lair yep. Yep. at Highland Film Groups. Yep. So basically what happens is there's this um, this pilot and she um, something happens in the sky and she crashes down, yep. crashes into this lair, and there's hey. all these fucking monsters and shit in there. And yeah. Basically, she makes it out of the cave, so it's almost like the descent. But then these fuckers follow her all the way to the fucking U.S. I don't know if she is, is it U.S. I think it is U.S. Mm-hmm. It, knowing him, it's either U.S. or U.K. That one of the military bases. Yeah, and then it's just all out fucking war on on in the yeah. military base with yeah. these fucking monsters. Fuck, this sounds cool, man. Yeah. I'd buy that for a dollar. Fuck Fucking yeah. two dollars, man. <laughs> Neil Marshall is getting back into his yeah. bag. Like it, it, it sounds like this, like like the descent. It sounds like dog soldiers. Yeah. Like, fuck yeah, man. I'm just hoping that um we get some some of those guys from Dog Soldiers in there. Yeah, you know what I mean. I kind of feel like it's gonna have like a um, an Overlord feel as well. Yeah, it's, it it yeah. sounds very similar to Overlord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm excited for that, man. Mm. Uh, who's also coming back is the character, um, from Orphan. Yeah. That horror film Orphan. So there's going to be a prequel film called First Kill. So Isabel Furman will return to the role of Esther. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and detail how she got into that position, Mm -hmm. but also her first family that she went with. Yeah. And the shit that she sort of creates and, and starts, um. Bruin there. Julia Stiles is going to play the mom in this one. So Julia Stiles is now playing mom roles. Okay. She saved the last dance and now she's going to kill an orphan. Oh, <laughs> I'll buy that for a dollar. <laughs> it's, it's weird with prequels, especially horror prequels, because I know that they lose. Like, and that the the monster wins. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's no yeah. overcoming it. Like, she's going to lose. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, the first film was fucking... Um, massive in terms of box office. Yeah, though. it was huge, man. Like, and it was like a tiny budget, mm-hmm. and it just blew up. Yep. So yeah, look out for the orphan prequel. Um, yeah. that first one was fucking weird. Did you Did you watch it? Yeah. Good. 
It was all right. It was just very weird. You know that, um, fuck, what's that movie coming out with that chick and she's an author and she starts seducing that husband? It's kind of like that, but more fucked up. Author. Chick, she's an author. The trailer, she's sitting on the, the end of a, a boat bench Is and she's the, in the red swimsuit. Ah, uh, the, the beach house or something? Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like that, but just darker and weirder. Okay. Hmm. All right. Uh, Josh Duhamel has got the lead role in Bandit. Bandit. Um, so this will detail this. It was a Canadian mm. that went across the world just like <laughs> Which is robbing, robbing. <laughs> like crazy. Yeah. Um, he set the record for most like subsequent robberies <laughs> in a day. Yeah. He did three. Fucking all using hell. disguises and shit like that. That's fire, man. Um, and I think they found him because he was like, he had frequent flyer points <laughs> and he, he would fly himself first class around the world. Fuck. What a legend. <laughs> I know. Um, so Justin Hamill's going to play that role. That's cool, man. Yeah. Is this sounds Canadian good. or no? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to assume either. I don't yeah. want to. People get like, you know. Get upset when you a touchy about <laughs> yeah yeah um so yeah what else is touchy is the teenage mutant ninja turtles yeah mm-hmm. so they they're looking to do a sequel potentially potentially but not just any sequel yeah we're doing a sequel to the fucking the best one the nineties original fucking sequel yeah this the Ernie Reyes one the Ernie Reyes one yeah I don't know if it's Ernie in there Ernie's dad was in. It is Ernie's dad, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. But Ernie was in the second one. Second one, yeah. Which uh, was cut. A- <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking second one. How dare they? What? How dare they? Well, the, the reason why you don't see the turtle, the, the reason why there's more fighting and less, like, uh, weapon work in there yeah, is because they wanted to get it down to a, a lower rating. Or like a PG. Yeah. Instead of a PG thirteen, no wonder that one is it's, so it feels it, and it feels more more kitty, right? It does. Even the sound effects, sound effects, everything, yeah, just completely changed the tone. Whereas the first one was dark. The first one was still dark. Yeah, I mean, Raph is out there like Raph gets fucked up in that first one. Yeah, Damn. he does. And the music was darker. Yeah. Doom, 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 doom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the electric drums going on. <laughs> but yeah. Phil I'm Collins in I'm the back. excited for this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping they do this instead of the, the Seth Rogen one. Same. Like this one sounds more interesting. Yeah. Especially if it's the Turtles now. Yeah. Like years on. Years on. They'd be like. How old? This O's age. Uh, they would be. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, they would too. Yeah. Dun, 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 I'm, a, dun, dun. I'm a fucking turtle, you guys. <laughs> yeah. They'd be in that 25, 25 to 30 range. Yeah. So I'm wondering, is Splinter still alive? Is like If that's how the movie started, with them burying, burying Splinter. Splinter. Fire. That's a splinter in my heart, dog. Big time, but that that would be so good. The only thing is, we won't have Mako. Yeah, it's true. Voicing Splinter. Yeah. yeah. Do you reckon Casey comes back as well? Was Casey in the first one? He wasn't, was he? I think Casey, Casey, and Casey Jones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's in there. He it's is. Elias, Elias Cotillas plays yeah. him. I reckon Casey Jones and April probably have kids. Mm. Yeah. What do you call it? Because I was going to say, like, because turtles take fucking forever to age. I was thinking who's going to be the new Splinter, and I was thinking either Donatello or Mikey becomes Splinter. I don't think they get a new Splinter. Yeah. I reckon this would be them sort of dealing with, like, what what do we do? Yeah. Like, we've got no master. We're basically Ronin now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm. Like, what mm. do we do? This could be, like, the Logan story. This could be, like, Seven Samurai. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to be fucking fire. But you reckon Watch someone- them take our fucking ideas now. I know. Now. <laughs> no. I expect no. a check for that too. <laughs> I don't know. Three checks, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying there, BD? No. So, like, um, who's going to train Casey and April's kids? I reckon it I reckon it'll be all of them. Be all of them, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I kind of feel like Casey would have aged out. 
Yeah. The Even though Elias Katia still looks good. <laughs> the man just stays in shape. Yeah. Even though he's bald. I don't know. Yeah, it was still. He can look like a scumbag, that yeah. guy. <laughs> um, he just looks sweaty all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and yeah, like they would then introduce their kids yeah. to the turtles. Yeah. yeah. What if Casey and April died as well? And them kids was orphans. Wow. And then the turtles, they all have to be Splinter. Yeah. And then that's the significance of burying Splinter and finding their purpose. And then Mikey dies at the end of this one. Fuck, dog. Why would you (laughs) say Mikey dies, though? Because he's the humor of the group, which means that shit would just go south real bad. That would be fucked up. I'd want want Shredder back, though. Yeah. If Shredder came back too? Yeah. Not Fuck. not super shredder yeah. or whatever it is, like straight shredder, like he's yeah. he's got his shit together. <laughs> <laughs> Checks out a rehab. Yeah, out a rehab. <laughs> he's like, you know, got the foot he's putting the foot back together and all that yeah. sort of shit. That'd be cool. I don't need Krang, I don't need all of that yeah. stuff. Like no. doesn't need to go sci fi. Keep it sort of grounded a little bit. Have the turtles be the most, you know, spectacular thing in there. Wouldn't it be fucking nuts if Golden Harvest produced it? Oh, fuck. Can you and imagine even if they did Raymond Chow was up in there? Even if they didn't, if they just started the movie with the Golden... Ah, oh, man. Golden Globus. Can you imagine if they devised these costumes, like they made them exactly like the 90s ones, but more flexible, Yeah. and then you got fighters like fucking Zorro and Adkins to actually do all your stunts oh, in cool, the suits man. for you? That's That's what the producer was saying when he floated the idea was Brian Henson, who's Jim Henson's kids, yeah. um, would, like, the shit that he'd be able to do now Amazing. would be nuts. Oof. The only thing that I worry about is that, um, like we've seen with Predator, yeah. when they updated Predator's costume, it looked dog shit. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? They don't do it right. But that's because they don't get the right people for those costumes as well. Because mm. you had... Fucking what's his name for the first Predator? Stan, and he was just Stan Winston. Yeah, he was tall and lean. Ah, uh, Kevin, Kevin Michael, Michael Hall. Hall. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, instead of getting these big like wrestler yeah. style people yeah. to be in the suits, it's yeah. just dumb. Yeah, that's true. But if if you're getting like a, a Marco or a fucking Scott Atkins, yeah, to be in these suits, like true. I mean, you're you're getting yeah. lean sort of guys which you can build on, which yeah, yeah, yeah. be un- unreal. That would be crazy. It'd be cool. Doug Jones needs to be a turtle. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Big time. Fuck yeah. Douglas Jones. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, maybe someone else can just do the fighting. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think Doug Jones has got that much cunt about it. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird seeing, like, I don't know, just, we're jumping, but Doug Jones is in the, the fourth uh, Friday the 13th. It's yeah. so weird really? to see. Really? Yeah. Shit. I'll talk about it later. <laughs> um, <laughs> Colin Firth is yeah. going to be in a new zombie movie called Zombie Brother. Yeah. Oh. So the film is called New York Will Eat You Alive, but it's adapted from Zombie Brother, which yeah. is a comic. Ah, uh, Sorry, yes. that's that's my bad. No, no, you're all good. Um, I read the article too. I should have flagged <laughs> it. Um, so it's about this kid witnessing the zombie apocalypse, basically, yeah. in New York. In and, New York. And, and kind of... Um, realizing that he's just got to get the fuck out of there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it, it's from the water this time. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So there's something wrong with the water. The water's contaminated and it's slowly turning people yeah. in New York City into zombies. <laughs> Fucking crazy. So I want, I want Jesus Amaro to be... In here <laughs> and be Bronx zombies. It'd be fucking fire. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so I wonder who um, Colin Firth's going to be because the lead character, like the way that they detailed it, mm. he seemed pretty young. Yeah. So maybe he's going to be, you know, later on. Yeah. Potentially. Maybe this is him looking back. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it sounded like this. Like the source material drew so much acclaim, though. Mm, like yeah. it's been ad- ad- adapted for a stage play. It was that anime as well? Was it? It's an animated movie as well, or something? An animated series, know. something like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a digital comic, so it would be digital animated. comic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Hmm. Anything that Firth is in, 
Like Firth got the girth to like you know, <laughs> do whatever he wants after Kingsman. Kind of yeah. elevates. He elevates everything. That, that's yeah. what I like about Firth. Yeah. But it's it's weird. Like I found him believable in Kingsman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that he was doing all that shit. I remember every time I have to take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> what Ben Ben uh, Ben Wheatley got going on the there? The Wheats, man. <laughs> Wheat skeets. <laughs> so, um with Ben Wheatley. Uh, so Neon has announced the first synopsis, so synopsis, fucking hell, I'm fucking out my words today, um, for the feature by Ben Wheatley titled In the Earth. Yeah. Um, this is pretty cool. Um, so essentially it's set in a world where... Uh, set in so, a world. <laughs> in a time. Uh, they're basically searching for a cure to this virus. Mm. Um, as scientists and park scout venture deep into this forest on a routine equipment run, um, and then just through the night, their journey becomes a terrifying voyage. I say voyage, not voyage. <laughs> um, through the heart of darkness, the forest coming to life around them. Mm. Okay. So the, does the virus make them... Coronavirus? <laughs> does it make them like zombies or is it, is it like the I rage virus? I think it's it's changing the actual world. I think it's doing something to the animals and... There's happening. probably monsters and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'd still watch it. Of course. It's Ben Wheatley. Man. Something new. Wheatley's like the busiest man in the world now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like gonna direct Tomb Raider 2. Gonna direct the Meg 2. Man's is just on point now. Yeah. I don't know. Wheat Bix is about it. <laughs> yeah. Getting that bread. Mm-hmm. Um, Barkley. Charles Barkley mm-hmm. is going to produce... A um, basketball series again. And, like since the last dance came out, everybody's got a basketball <laughs> Everybody show. Everybody needs one. Um, so it's about the I gambling need my Kobe scandal. One is what I fucking need. That's coming up. Oh man, for sure they're dropping something for Kobe. And hopefully it's tasteful and not some dirty shit. Because I don't want any like you know I don't want Kobe shown in like a bad light. But I also want the honesty about him too. Because Kobe was raw. Chris Rock was talking that there's video of Chris Rock, right? Sitting courtside and Kobe is next to him. Kobe's in the game, right? So they're, um, and he's just, I think it's Knicks versus, versus Lakers. Fuck. Right. And, and he's there just talking shit like 24 seven to Kobe uh, okay. because Kobe's got like, you know, ninja focus. Man's is not hearing a word he's saying at the end of that game. Kobe dropped 81 on the fucking, <laughs> on the fucking Knicks. Like, and that, that was it. Like he didn't say a word to him after that. It was unreal. There's video. You can, you can see, I think it's in 2003, I think. And it's, it's Chris Rock just talking shit constantly. <laughs> it's fucking cool. Kobe had that Jordan focus. Um, so the move, the, the show, is it a show or is it a, a movie? I thought um, it was a show. It's a show. Um, it's going to be called The Line, and it's about the gambling scandal in college in basketball. College basketball, yeah. And all the shit that they, yeah, it's just crazy. All the racism, all that sort of shit. I think it's set in the 70s. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because, it, uh, uh, what's his name? Barkley was saying that, like, what, what happened back then, like, it, it still relates to what's happening right now. So that shit is still going on that way that it's set up. Yeah. I'm excited to see it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Anything basketball now is just, yeah. Like, yeah. Just gets me. Did you notice as soon as the last dance came out? Yeah. Then like all those, like those era basketball jerseys and, and singlets and shit. Started dropping. Started, started, everywhere. Yeah, every, everyone started wearing them again. Everyone had a throwback jersey. Ev- Fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Just another story about Kobe, right? So the, the Lakers were playing. I don't know who, right? And like three or four of their of his team members were wearing Kobe Nikes, right? They lose that game. They get back to the locker room, and Kobe takes all their shoes off them. And says, give me those shoes back because if you want to wear those shoes, you got to win. He That's took, fucking- he took their fucking <laughs> shoes from them, man. <laughs> it was That's fucking tough. awesome. It reminds me of James Brown. Uh-huh. Every time someone used to fuck up with James Brown, he used to make him pay him 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you fuck up the drums, that's 20. And he'd say it to you. 
That'll be half a yard. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> uh, so Michael Bay is coming back this time yeah. directing. Yeah. So he's getting in his uh, his mini movie, small uh, scale movie budget back. I like bag. I like Bay here. Same. Yeah, I like him. Same. This is yeah. where. He, like I, I hope he does a few movies here now. Yeah. Um, so he's going to adapt the Danish film, The Ambulance, mm. or Ambulance, Ambulance, because the Ambulance is the Eric Roberts. The Eric one. Roberts. One. <laughs> yeah. I always remember the cover for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Eric Roberts always looks like he's going to cry. I know. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you want to see the fucking koala bear? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I love dice. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the story is about these two brothers that do a heist. The heist goes bad. They're on the run. They hijack an ambulance. They take hostages. And they've got the hostages, the ambulance staff. I don't know if there's a victim in there or what. Fuck. But they're running the ambulance and they're trying to get away. Yeah. And it just looks like everything's piling up and they're not going to get out of it. Yeah. I don't know what happens in the movie. I haven't watched the Danish mm. original. Mm-hmm. Um, but this shit sounds fire. It sounds like a lot of the personalities kind of bouncing off each other. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like it if the victim wakes up, like that's yeah. in the ambulance already, if there is someone there. Yeah. Supposedly the, the brother's relationship is strained as well. Yeah. Yeah. So they're going through something as well together. Yeah. yeah. And just them doing this fucking, this heist to sort of opening up old wounds and all yeah. that sort of stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see what Bay does and how he how he sort of captures all of this now. Bay's good at, at escalating tension. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like when shit goes down in pain and gain, fuck that's rough. Yeah. yeah. Pain and gain goes from like a 50 to like a thousand. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> and it's all real. Like, yeah. Somebody call an ambulance. But not for me. <laughs> uh, we got our first look at the Eternals as well. Mm. Mm. Uh, they dropped some um, some promo items. Fake Manolo boots straight from Steve Matt. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we we seen uh, Rob, what's Robert it? Robert Madden. No, no, Rob Richard Madden. Richard, Richard Madden. Madden. That's it. Someone Richie, in there. Dick it Madden. <laughs> um, He's Dick Mad, bro. <laughs> As Icarus. Yeah. So his his character is Icarus. It looks very much like like the same superhero costumes we've seen. Yeah, we very we, molded. We saw um, Brian Brian Tyree Henry's suit already, so it kind of looks the same. Yeah, yeah. Very tank. fucking uniform. I mean, they, they, they make you look oh, real man, good, looks, though. looks huge in that suit. <laughs> but it's like these leather sort of fitted suits. Yeah. Um, he looks like a star, though. Richard Madden, Richard Madden looks like a star. a star. All of them look really good. Fuck. Yeah. How's about, uh, what's his face? That guy. The Indian guy. Kamalin. The fucking he yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's his name? Kamalin something. Yeah. <sighs> Damn it's it. it's why, there. Right? Why am I forgetting his name now? Mm. Um, Kamal, no. Nah. I want to say Nagiri, but it's not that. Damn it. But he's tanked. He's huge. He's yeah. looking, he's got pipes all over there. <laughs> 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 the veiniest guy ever, man. <laughs> Very vascular. Mm. Um, and we got some Spider Man 3, uh, well, a Spider Man 3 shot. And yeah. weirdly, it's got the Far From Home suit in yeah. there. It's yeah. It's got the Far From Home suit. So, like we we got the original spider suit, mm. we got the um, uh, spider iron spider iron spider iron spider. Now we got the far from home suit. The it's like a another suit. I don't know if you'll have the stealth suit still, but it mm. it it kind of feels like you'll you'll probably develop another suit by the end of it. I mean, yeah, we're, we're dealing with um, the multiverse. We're also dealing with Electro being in here. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wonder if he's going to ask the other Peter Parker how he dealt. Defeated? Yeah. How did he deal with it? What did, what did he do? Did he? Yeah. Yeah. How did he develop his web shooters? Did he? Yeah. And then we're going to have Tobey Maguire like, mine's is natural. Like, yeah. <laughs> we all locked out. Do all that. <laughs> Canisters. <laughs> web shooters. Yeah. It's just that crying with the smile from the <laughs> meme. <laughs> so, ah, I love that meme. Oh, fuck. 
so we have Aiden Gillis and Charlie Cox to star in Kin. Mm. So this one's a crime drama and it's about this Irish family and it's just this fucking gangland war and it's going to yep. focus on like everything that's going on there but also that fucking bond of family. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the it's Littlefinger yeah. as well. Yeah. A- Aiden Gillen um from Game of Thrones. And old Daredevil himself. Yeah. Mm. I'm like ever since Daredevil, I'm excited to see more of Charlie Cox. I just can't Pause. take it seriously. <laughs> like every time, Cox. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this sounds good. Early yeah. development, Ken coming at you very soon. Mm. Um, the Wrong Turn reboot has mm. been rated. So has um, The Green Knight with Dev Patel. Dev Patel, yeah, yeah, which looks good. Like it's it's a it's a real story. It's a, a Arthurian legend. Yeah. Part of it, yeah. Um, but it it makes all those elements really fantastical. Mm-hmm. I like what I'm seeing. I like it. Um, I, like I haven't it I haven't watched any of the 45 wrong turn sequels, reboots, and 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 I and watched prequels. the first one, first sequel. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I've I've only watched the original. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I've only yeah. I didn't I didn't dive and delve into the other ones. Yeah. And Eliza Dushku like, in there. <laughs> yeah. I fucking swear to God, one of them was called like the wrong turn, the right turn or something like that. And it just fucking threw me off. <laughs> I believe it. I definitely believe it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. It's ridiculous. <laughs> righty, tidy, lefty, righty. Um, it's lefty, tidy, righty, loosey, right? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I miss scrubs. <laughs> I didn't read too much about this next thing. Uh, Rachel Nichols. What's she up to? Uh, so she's starring in that new horror film. So it's called Demigod. So this one, I just brought up the, the article because this one actually sounded cool. I just couldn't remember it. Yeah. Um, but more horror. I've noticed we've been getting quite a bit of horror programming. You I, can do it with a smaller cast. True. Yeah. Especially if it's smaller like some cast, body horror shit. Tighter. You can have it set out in the open. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it makes sense. It does. Yeah, but essentially, uh, Rachel Nichols, she, um, fuck, where was it? So essentially her grandfather passed away mm-hmm. and her grandfather was a, was a huntsman. Yes. But then what's occurring here is that as she arrives at where he used to live at the secluded cabin, um, the inheritance that was left to her by her grandfather was just kind of really fucked up. And yeah, it was more than what she expected mm. from it. Yeah, um, and she's like just engrossed in this hunting ritual. Yeah, this ancient hunting ritual, and um, it's something that comes from her past for a family, and she just has to figure it out and get the fuck out of there and fix it. Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. I I do remember reading this because straight away I was like, ready yeah. or not, ready or not. Um, I was like, Evil Dead. Yeah, <laughs> it's a Necronomicon. Yes. Yeah. Maybe maybe it is. Fuck. Maybe it is like like a witch's handbook or a warlock's handbook or yeah. some evil text. Mm. Um, what if we find out this is fucking thinking? It's just based into Snow White. Mm, that'd and, be cool as well. And this is fucking thingy's handbook. What if it's the mirror? Yeah. Mm. You see an old Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> if, Chris, if Chris Hemsworth shows up, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> More like the cuntsman. <laughs> uh, so what's Kevin Bacon doing there? So he's Adam. he's um he's joining um MGK and Travis Fimmel in this film called One Way. So yeah. I didn't I didn't read this one. This wasn't on my radar. Is it because MGK showed yeah. up? So Machine Gun Kelly, uh his character plays um like he, he's like a small time gangster basically and he steals from the boss from his boss right idiot <laughs> which i yeah. which i think is travis fimmel okay then he goes on the run so he hits the bricks and then he reaches out to his father which is played by kevin bacon kevin bacon is um like they're estranged okay them two they haven't spoken in years and then Kevin Bacon rats him out to the boss. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. So this straight, is straight like, straight away. I wasn't liking Kevin Bacon <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just from the synopsis. Like fucking, this is almost like the opposite of that Kinnaman and Neeson movie. That's what I'm thinking. Run all night. Yeah. I haven't watched that one yet. It's not bad. Me neither. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're not bad. 
I'm going to check right. it out. And also his name is now Machine Gun Karen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll wait for a trailer. Yeah. See how I feel yeah. about it. Yeah. If it said like Lay One L was doing it, then I'd watch it. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But I don't think MGK is the one to be selling the film. Nah. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of MGK. Nah. Well, not his acting, anyways. Yeah. yeah. All right. So filming is also wrapped. Uh, for Netflix's new film, Red Notice. Yeah. Um, and we also got some new photos of, like, the the stars just posing for yeah. the, for the mm. ending of the film. Uh, this is pretty cool as well. So we had Ryan Reynolds, The Rock, Gal Gadot, um, all on set. So it seems like it's going to be a pretty big uh, motion picture, as yeah. I like to call it. <laughs> yeah. This is over at Netflix, eh? Hey? Yeah. 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 So we should, we'll probably get a trailer in the next, like, four or five months or something Very like that. Soon. And then yeah. two months later, the movie will be out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited about it. It's big filmmaking too. Mm. Yeah. It's one of those classic heist films. So Gal Gadot is playing an art thief and then Johnson's playing the Interpol agent trying to find her. And Reynolds is the, the best con man in the world or yeah. some yeah. shit. Yeah. In real life as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to like, it sounds like um, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Yeah. Yeah. That would be cool if it was. Gal Gadot kind of has that look as well in the picture. She does have that that common mm. San Diego look. I call it right now, Netflix. That's another check you have. <laughs> red notice. Yeah. Your mind's eye. Common San Diego wore red. Yeah. Well, Illuminati confirmed, man. This shit's happening. <laughs> uh, this was actually cool. So Henry, Henry Golding's like blowing up, right? Yes. Could be Bond. I actually wouldn't mind him as Bond. Same. He kind of has has an old school feel for he's me. He's like 30 something. So yeah. He's the Bond day three, yeah. But the way that he sounds when mm. he speaks as well, yeah. Yeah. kind of gives me Bond feels. Yeah. Mm. Pause. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> um so he was talking about the cultural inspirations for Snake Eyes, the the new GI Joe spin-off movie. Yeah. Mm. Um and he was saying that the director uh, he directed something else. Robert Schwenke did Red. Yes. Mm. Um, he's using all these old Akira Kurosawa um, movies as influence mm. for the tone and feel of Snake Eyes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and a lot of the the fighting and choreography and stuff mm. is very much Akira Kurosawa. So I'm I'm really interested now, right? Um, the cur- like. We're obviously not going to get it, but you've seen like a Kurosawa fight movie, yeah? No, never. So they he he that that's where you'd see like the Kill Bill where they'd cut and then oh shit, big fountains, yeah, explosions right. of blood. Mm. Mm. But it's very like the they'd have like they'd have like, you know, their, their fight and then it'd stop and then they'd look at each other and then it'd be like that one strike. Yeah. And then big explosion of blood. Yeah. Romance explosion. Cool. (laughs) If they did that. I don't mind that. I don't mind that in the mix with some real nice choreography. Yeah. Especially sword play pause. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be cool. Like um, the way they're marketing or, advertising this film is that it's almost like a, a redo of what was already done with G.I. Joe as well. Mm. Yeah. So if they focus on Snake Eyes, I'd be so happy with that as well. Mm. Same. Snake Eyes is a cool motherfucker, man. Yeah. he's all, He was always the best part of those movies. Yeah. yeah. Damn Snake Eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Pony cage. Uh, um, uh. Last piece of news mm. in film news. Got some delays. Yeah. Yeah. Some more delays. More delays. Um, delays. Story of our fucking story of the year. It's 2020. Story of 2020. Yeah. Delay. Delay the year too. Delay. Two. Just watch. We get to December and they're going to d- delay the whole fucking year in general. <laughs> 2020 will go on for another three months. <laughs> um, so Free Guy and Death on the Nile mm. have now just been removed. Like it's not it's not even like we're delaying it. Yeah, it's, it's just, just we're removing it. Just, it. It'll come out when it comes out, fellas. <laughs> so I, don't, I don't I don't know if now Disney Plus or Disney are, are looking at possibly 
do we then mm. just put it up on the subscription service so yeah. there's something out? Look what we made with Mulan. That's it. Yeah. Charge them $30. I get it done. I don't believe the budget of Death of Death on the Nile would be as much or anywhere near Mulan. Nah. Yeah. Um, so they, they could probably get away with, with putting that out wide. Yeah. Like both on the service and to buy or rent on Apple, Google, wherever. I yeah. mean- um, Army Hammer was talking about it, right? So we we reported that he um, he was kind of disappointed that he didn't get to fly out to Egypt to actually shoot the movie. So yeah, yeah. I mean they they've saved money there, so they might as well. Mm. I think it's under forty million dollars this movie. Yeah. Just put it out, yeah. Put it out. I think I don't. Oh, sorry, I was going to say after watching Murder recently with you, mm. I'm fucking hanging for Death on the Nile. Mm. Like, I'm really excited. Yeah. Hell yeah. I like the character, like Poro yeah. is just awesome. And yeah. Kenneth Branagh, the way that he portrays Poro is, yeah. is I enjoyed really, it. really good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I love murder mysteries. Mm. Same. Mm. Same. Um, so, yeah, chuck it out on, on a streaming service, man. Just yeah. do it. HBO Max, man. Pick it up. Because <laughs> uh, it's Fox. Oh, it'll, Disney. it'll be Disney. Yeah. Same with Free Guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's I true. I don't know about Free Guy. To me, like Death on the Nile would make sense to just chuck it out. Mm, yeah. On Hulu or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Even. Um, Free Guy should be delayed. It looks like a big movie. It yeah. looks yeah. like a tentpole movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, it'd make sense to delay it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Possibly coming, hey, July 4th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, mm. they, they, they called, called it. it. Yeah. He knew. Yeah. He knew what was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what could also be delayed as well is Wonder Woman. Yeah. yeah. So they haven't confirmed this, but Wonder Woman is the only movie coming out of Christmas now. Yeah. So it could work in Warner's favor mm-hmm. or it could not. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they could have another tenant. Well, that's what I'm thinking. So with the stumble that they made with tenant, do they – do they risk putting this movie out in the cinemas and then waiting the six months or do they, you know, be smart about it and, hey, it's going to be out for three weeks and then mm. comes out on fucking streaming service mm. to buy? Yeah. No streaming service, actually, just to buy. Yeah. Or they, rent. They should just do that. They should just do that. Because it, it's been delayed probably two and a half years now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's too long, man. Yeah. I mean, people, Way too long. It, it sounds like people are more excited right now about a Snyder cut, which is coming out on your streaming service. I am. I am. Same. Than this brand new fucking movie that's supposed to, that that's been shot for two years. Yeah. Like, just put the fucking movie out, man. At this point, I'm tired of hearing about Wonder Woman yeah, too. Um, it's, it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this, this is what's going to happen though. This, this is it going forward. This is how I feel about Bond. This is how I feel about everything. Mm. I've I've seen too much of some of these movies to to you know. Another trailer is another trailer is not going to do it. Like I I don't care now. I don't yeah. care. True. Just fucking when you uh, oversaturate the market, yeah, it really fucks up my expectations and. It's just not something I'm looking forward to. Like, I don't want to have to see an hour of this movie in trailers and I have nothing to look forward like, to. At, yeah. at the same time, though, it's almost like, you know, fuck, why do I need to see this movie at the movies? Mm. I've waited two and a half years to watch this movie. Yeah. I can wait another six months. Mm. Yeah. Like, I'm, I I can go out and rent it then. I can I can do whatever I want. This, yeah. this is what we... I'm desensitized the, I'm, yeah. to the waiting. Um, this is the predicament. Mm. Yeah, they, would, they which should they just drop it now. They should drop it now. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd rather be pleasantly surprised like that. Like when I was looking through the iTunes store and I saw Spell and I was like, ah, oh, Spell, nice. You spell out. Yeah, yeah. no. Holy shit. Yeah. Fuck. All right. Mm. Uh, I, I know what I'm going to watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's it for our film news this week. Yeah. That's it. Um. We're going to move into movie trailers. Mm. Trailers. Which was pretty light this week. Yeah. Extremely light. Um, so we got a trailer for Vanguard, which is the Jackie Chan starring world trotting epic, action epic. Which doesn't look like Jackie Chan's in here that much. No. And it also looks like Jackie Chan's actually getting a stuntman. Yeah. 
Um, so this is a CG heavy um, martial arts epic. Yeah. It's like a giant Chinese movie. It looks which probably massive. cost a lot of fucking money. It looks like Michael Bay directed. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's a lot of like big set pieces. What is the story for Vanguard though? I'm actually not too sure to be honest. It looks like they're world police. That's what it looks yeah, like. It <laughs> does America. look like that. It, it, that's what it looks like. Team it looks China. Like, yeah, it looks like he's the the head of some or the lead of some bloody world police, and they go out there and they they get shit done. Like that's yeah, that's what it looks like. It's good to see Jackie in it like a, in, a, in a Chinese movie again, though. Very lean, yeah. Jackie. Though it is. Yeah. He is getting on though. He's he's getting a bit old there. We're yeah. not going to see Tank rip Jackie. No, nah. no. Nah. Like in gorgeous in fucking Army of God or yeah, yeah. Where like, he had like freaking abs and obliques and yeah, man, dude was hench. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, thingy, I I'm actually really surprised that after Zodiac, mm. his son isn't doing more movies with him. Zodiac. Yeah, remember that? It was like 2014 or maybe. Yeah, like, that Zodiac movie. Yeah, it was meant to be his last hurrah and it didn't end up happening. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah his, yeah. his son's in there. Okay. He plays a character and I'm surprised. Maybe his son didn't take to it. I don't know. But mm. um, yeah, I'm surprised I didn't see more of Jackie's son actually doing movies with him because that would have yeah. been cool if it was just minimal Jackie, pass on the torch and his son takes over from there. Yeah. Mm. Is Jackie Chan's son in this Vanguard movie? I don't know. Maybe. What's his son's name? I completely forgot. Joey Chan. <laughs> Chan the man. Um, we got a, a trailer for the Lego Star Wars holiday special as mm. well. Mm. Quite interesting, actually. This got me, like, real excited. Yeah. Quite interesting. Like, I watched this on the shitter and it, like, lifted <laughs> my spirit something fierce. It, um... So it's it's a continuation. It's actually set after nine. It's set after nine. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what's interesting. Yeah, me. like okay. Um, and and Ray finds like this crystal key hmm. that transports her back into the original trilogy. Oh shit! And then from there, like she she goes through the original trilogy and like the worlds collide in like dimensions. That's cool. So like the new trilogy guys will get along with the old trilogy guys and then kind of get themselves into predicaments. It's Lego. So it's all com like comedy and stuff like that. But yeah. it had, a, it had a certain feel this trailer that just wasn't there in the sequels. Mm. You know what I mean? Like there, there was more, I don't know if it, if it was wonder or there was, there was more excitement yeah. and momentum and, yeah. and, and, um, this dynamic energy that just wasn't there in the sequels. Mm -hmm. um, it's a 90 minute special. That's mad. So it's, it's, it's an actual movie. It's an actual movie then. That's and, so cool, man. Yeah. For them to do this. Yeah. That's really cool. For me, that's really cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited. Cause it, it's like, um, it's going back. So it'll, it'll go back to, to Vader. It'll, it'll put Vader and Luke together on Tatooine when Luke's looking at the suns. Mm. Um, but it's, I think it's Palpatine also trying to change the future. Sick as well. Yeah. That's fucking mad. Yeah. I'm, I'm in, I watched yeah. the shit out of this. Fuck yeah. I was going to say Jack Chan's son's name is JC, JC Chan. Okay. And he was a singer, but at the same time, he probably doesn't do movies now because he was detained in 2015 for um, housing people to take drugs. So, and he got locked away for that. Yeah. Shit. Okay. Well, hopefully everything's all right in the Chan household. Drugs in China is different than drugs over here. He only got detained for six months. Yeah, let's just keep it there. Uh, yeah. But yeah, on to uh, entertainment news on a sadder pitch as well. Mm. Mm. So we we lost a legend. He was one of the greatest men in history, and he was also the first to be known as Mr. Bond on the big screen. Um, Sean Connery passed away peacefully in his sleep at the age of 90. Mm. Um, mm. It was a really fucking big punch to the chest when, when this came through because... 
just recently, I'm pretty sure we were talking like, where the fuck is Connery? Like, what's he doing? Yeah. And then the news came through and it, it fucking hurt. Yeah, man. This was tough. Connery was a fucking worker though. Yeah. He yeah. started as a bricklayer, a milkman, where he probably got a lot of his bond skills. <laughs> uh, it's bonding quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, he he was in the Navy yep. um, before he even hit that prominence as bond yeah um grew up in the same town billy billy Connolly grew up in the same town as him yeah oh wow um, it's it's nuts mm. uh and his his career spanned so many like iconic roles yeah yeah like you would think that it stops at bond like like it seems like a lot of actors get their one role so he did that, came back, did never say never again. That yep. wasn't officially part of the Bond catalog. Mm. And then had like roles as Indy's dad. Yeah. In The Rock, um, Highlander, mm-hmm. Zardoz, like what else? League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. The, the, his role in um, The Untouchables, which, which won him an Oscar. That's it. Mm. Yeah. Like fucking man. unreal, man. Man yeah. was a legend. Apparently... Sean Connery was one of the hardest working men in show business. Yeah. yeah. He wanted to be involved in everything. Mm-hmm. The writing, the technical details of how they were going to shoot the scene, where the actors were going to be, like, even the directing. Yeah. The action. Yeah. He wanted to know how you were going to do action. Yeah. Nuts. Yeah. Like, we definitely lost a legend, but... Like he had been retired for the last 13 years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like he's, he's, in, he's enjoyed he, it at least in the twilight of his life. He got to actually enjoy what he's worked towards. Yeah. 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 I mean, he, the, the, the story, one of the stories that came out was, um, him, the Spielberg on the phone with him asking, Hey, do you want to, do you want to come back? We want to bring you back for, for Indy. Yeah. And he, he thought about it and he just said, no, Ret- retirement is just too, too enjoyable right yeah. now. Yeah. So he, he was enjoying himself, which is good. Yeah. So what, what came out as well, right? Which, which kind of like, just, it's weird that people do this, but anyways, mm. um, when he passed away, one of the first things that media outlets brought back was his interview with I, I believe it was Barbara Walters. Barbara Walters, mm-hmm. yeah. And he talks about justifying um, domestic abuse. Mm. Like, why throw that in the fire now? You know what I mean? Like, don't jump off the ledge and and come out with that. You know what I mean? That came out months ago. Yeah. And From a story that was that that came out years ago. We're talking twenty, thirty years ago. Mm. Like. Yeah. It's yeah. weird that people do that when, when people die. Yeah. I like try to sour their image. Mm-hmm. Um, but what didn't sour my image for, for Connery at all mm-hmm. um, was this interaction that the creator and showrunner of Billions detailed. Mm. And so he said um, there was a movie that Connery was working on and there was a sequence where the actors were going to go underwater Mm-hmm. Massive action scene underwater. Yeah. yeah. So then Connery calls up the director. Well, he wants to know from the director, like, what's going to happen? How are we going to do it? Mm. What's going to, like, you know, what would you like me to do? And then the director kind of like brushed him off. He didn't show up. Like, he's, Connery's trying to get in contact with him, and the director's just pushing him aside until yeah. eventually they catch up. And like the director's like, oh, we'll just um, work this out, me and Sean. We don't need the writers in the room or anything like that. Yeah. Sean Connery is already cunty. Yeah. Um, Big time cunty. And then he's talking. Let's go cunty. <laughs> <laughs> he's talking to the director and the director's like, don't worry about all that practical stuff, Sean. We'll fix it with movie magic. And from then on, <laughs> Connery was like, fuck this game. I'm out and yeah. retired. That was his last interaction with, like, you know, the movie biz. Mm. It's crazy. I'm glad that he went out on his terms. Fuck yeah, man. And just took no shit. Yeah. So rest in peace, Sean Connery. Mm-hmm. Um, we do hope that uh, 
your family uh, uh, are keeping well during this time and it would probably be really hard. Yep. Um, and our condolences to your family, friends and fans out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, and we also lost um, Jeffrey Palmer. Yeah. So Jeffrey Palmer, um, he passed away as well at the age of 93 in his home. He was happy. He was happy. Um, he was uh, in in quite a few roles as well. Yeah. Um, that that he he played. He, he was really iconic. He was yeah. also um, uh, recognized by um, the um, fuck, by the monarch. What's her face? He was basically knighted and said like you yeah. you can be the, yeah you he can was, uh, appointed an officer of the order of the British Empire. Is that one? Yeah. Yeah, but so was Sean. He was uh, Sean Connery. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but he, he was in fucking heaps of movies. Like he was yeah. in Bond. He yeah. was in Tomorrow Never Dies. Yeah. Um, he, I thought he was also the guy in the start of um, episode eight. That's in, in control of the Dreadnought. That um, could be. That Poe's trying to blow up. Mm. Ten bloody minutes ago. Yeah. Um, He's had a long and and um, really successful career, yeah, quite a fruitful career. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we also wish his family, friends, and fans mm. um, all the best, and and send our condolences yeah. to you guys. Yeah, it's a tough one, man. Yeah, mm. so definitely. Many, so many losses. I hate seeing that shit. Yeah, same. But um, moving on to other entertainment news. So uh, we received news about AMC Cinemas. And essentially, um, for them to stay liquid, they would need to raise forty-seven million to actually remain in business. Yeah. So their their plan is to sell their shares. Yeah. Um, to then raise it, forty-seven million seems like a week in the box office. Mm. Know what I mean? Not not for a cinema. What do you mean? So cinemas like that box office take that you see, they keep. Five percent, not even. Mm. Most of that goes back to the studios. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they they make their money on popcorn and drinks and and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, very very hard game to be in the old cinema game. Um, forty seven million though, forty seven million dollars worth of stock is possibly half a week of take from a Netflix or someone like that. Mm. So. If Netflix owns a controlling portion of AMC, Netflix has their studio, their, their theaters. What yeah. if what what if like AMC just like refused to sell it to Netflix? <laughs> because like Netflix could then put on their content as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that's what I'd do. What was the what was the numbers for Extraction, Big Dog? How many people watched Extraction? Uh, on, on the opening weekend, it was nearly 58 million people or something like that. Something astronomical. Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. Yeah. It's massive. Yeah. Yeah. But if like AMC could also profit off Netflix if they, um, like stream their movies too. Yep. Yep. Like off, I think they have, um, affiliations with Fandango now or something like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. You get a piece of that pie as well. Uh Uh-huh. Um, we need some cinemas to stay open, man. When this pandemic's o- over and we're getting new movies I, at the cinema. When, when that happens and there's a vaccine, mm. then we're good. But until then, shut your fucking cinemas, man. Don't open them. The problem is that they, they keep them open. Some of these some of these chains are still open. Yeah. They're still paying workers. They're still paying for all the food and everything and all that sort of shit and Shut your shut your jaws. Mm. People are going to lose their jobs. I understand that, but you know, shut your doors. It's the only way to stay alive. Yeah, mm. you don't you don't want to stay open, lose the whole business, and then no one has a job to come back to. But then there's still the cost of keeping the business. Yeah, yeah. and that's it's, I think the that's also what's all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. fuck. Yeah. You'd think there was like a furlough on that or something. You. would You'd hope so. There yeah. was. Over here, there was. Yeah. Mm. Um, so 
we were tracking the original Suicide Squad sequel that was going to be directed by Gavin O'Connor. Mm. Yeah. For a while. And I thought that was going to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there was uh, like Kinnaman would post, we're working out for the Suicide Squad sequel. Yep. Yep. And Jay Hernandez was there and a few mm. other of the guys. Pardon me. And then that didn't eventuate. No, no. Even, even though, I mean, just this year, at the start of the year, we saw Kinnaman over at Will Smith's house. Yeah. Like he was just there. Mm-hmm. Like it seemed like it was going to happen. Yeah. But then it didn't. And no, we it got, didn't. um, uh, what's his face? Fuck. James Gunn. James Gunn. I was going to say Gunn, Zack yeah. Snyder. <laughs> um, we got Zack Snyder's version. So in, but going back to O'Connor's one, um, what he was going to have was Black Adam be the villain. Yeah. Yeah. So he was going to be the villain that the Suicide Squad were going to need to take down, um, which would have been Black Adam, Black Adam's <laughs> <laughs> um, intro to the yeah. DC universe. Which would have been fucking cool. Mm. So I, I wonder if it was the pull of James Gunn or The Rock going, this isn't going to be a bit part for me. I'm not going to just play a villain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I want my own movie. Yeah. Know what I mean? Which, I mean, The Rock is like the most bankable star in Hollywood. He deserves, like, he, he can demand his own movie. Yeah. And he should. Yeah. I, w- I would like a mention mm. or, or to see him a little bit before you see him in his own movie. Mm. Um. For me, that that kind of um, gives me something to look out for. Yeah, that's yeah. it. But yeah, I reckon there will be. I reckon there'll be a, a shout out to to Black Adam in this movie. I think it's the next movie that should be on the rank for for DC. Yeah, yeah. So there probably will be either that or somehow in Shazam they'll they'll do something. Mm. Mm. So staying with DC. Um, so Ray Fisher has been out talking about the, the reshoots, right. Mm-hmm. But specifically the, the Whedon cut reshoots. Yeah. yeah. Cause he's, he's currently shooting with Zach now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So they asked the question, like, you know, how much of it was, is different because like people went online, they looked at the trailers. I mean, everything is kind of different. Yeah. It's kind of been changed a little bit. Right. So Fisher came out and said, well, some things were similar with the reshoots that we mm. did with the original. And um, it's so hard to, to like tell the certain shots for, you know, other people because they, they were shooting separately. He yeah. would shoot his scene separately, which is kind of weird. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a lot of scenes that he wasn't there for. Um, but what he, what he can tell us about from the character is um, – from the theatrical version is that every single scene except for the, um, the Gotham city scene where they're all on the rooftop. Yeah. Yeah. With everyone, with Gordon and Batman and flash, um, every single scene that he shot was different. Every single one that was a reshoot. Fuck. So he, he reshot nearly all of his, his like everything in that movie. Yeah. For Whedon. Yeah. And he, yeah. What were you going to say? I said only for him to sort of come back now and have to redo all of that stuff again. Yeah. It's fucking wild, man. And it's weird because he also touched on um, how much of him was left in the movie yeah. that there was so much of his material that was just cut out. Yeah. So orig- originally I remember this coming out and um, Snyder saying that Cyborg is the heart of this movie. Like he, he's the one that's going to sort of push forward in this movie. Yeah. And then when we watched the movie, it was like, no, they, they changed everything now. Like everything is different. This is not what we've seen before. This is, Mm. this is completely different now. Yeah. I, I always think back to when you first seen them show up at that panel at Comic-Con, the Zack Snyder and how excited Ray Fisher was. He was, yeah. Like he was all in. Like it was every day you were getting Borg life posts on yeah, Instagram man. and shit like that. Yeah. And then once Whedon took over, all that stopped. Yeah. Like it just stopped. Even the, the, um, 
the appearances that they had at Comic Con with mm. Whedon, when they announced that it was Whedon, yeah, they were given lines to read. Ah, yeah, like they were fed lines like um, Whedon's going to bring a certain something to this film. That's why. God. Um, that's why when Affleck had that interview mm. and they ask him, "What does Josh Joss Whedon?" Um, bring to to Justice League, and then Affleck's like, "Well, Josh brings a certain class to the movie." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> so bad, man. Yeah. yeah, but I'm excited. Next year, we'll see it. Wow. 2021, yeah, um, the Snyder Cut. Hopefully, early. That's yeah. what I want. I want an early release. Well, it is coming up to the. Um, it is coming up to the anniversary of when it should have been released. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we'll, we'll see a release date finally given. Hopefully. Hey, can you fucking imagine? Like they were like, shoots were done ages ago, fellas. It's coming out on the same day. <laughs> <laughs> I would take the day off work. <laughs> Man, I would sit down four hours and just fucking disappear. <laughs> it's going to take four weeks, fellas. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. I'm on there every week. Though. Same, every man. week. Same. <laughs> yeah. I will watch it and then watch that super cut straight away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same. Because I reckon that super cut will have more in there too. I reckon. You reckon? Yeah. I reckon he'll do a Watchman. Yeah. 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 Um, so Boris Johnson mm-hmm. has announced that there'll be a Boris. second <laughs> a second lockdown in England starting on uh, November 2nd, I believe it was. Yeah. Fifth. Yeah. Fifth. So it's already started. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where it will lock down everything except for schools, workplaces that can't work remotely, and film shoots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, groceries and amenities Sorry. and all the, yeah. the shit that they need. Um, so that means that all cinemas are locked down in the UK. The, yeah. But the the thing that, that's different this time is that they're letting film shoot still. So yeah. the Batman is still allowed to shoot in the UK. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's still going ahead. So they won't halt that. Okay. So, I mean, the Batman's got like a year to shoot. Yeah. Yeah. They got, yeah. <laughs> they can, they can work it out they and, work and it another out. Uh, two years or a year and a half to get everything ready. Yeah. So they good. Yeah. It's interesting. Fucking hopefully it all works out for the best. But um, in other news, so the Justice League Snyder Cut trailer, which we've been hoping would get a widescreen release, Mm. um, has unfortunately been removed from YouTube. Mm. Um, A lot of people are speculating it was due to something wrong with the film, but we got clarification that it was just due to a music rights issue. Yeah, for Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they... like people were panicking on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. That like the trailer had been um, removed and that they had cancelled. Yeah. The the Justice League. Yeah, someone had put up a picture of um uh, them searching for it and then just the Eric Andre. Let me in. Let me in. <laughs> <laughs> it was the fucking best shit in the world. <laughs> but no, hopefully, um, hopefully they re-release it with a, a redub of another song or maybe some junky XL shit. And then um, thingy, give us the widescreen one as well. Yeah, that would be sick. Yeah. So the, that the, would be mad. The reason why the, the, it's shot the way it's shot or they displayed it the way that they displayed it was because of the way that Snyder shot it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Snyder shot it at a, a, a bigger ratio than 1.85. So that's why that trailer looks the way that it does. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It looks square in your TV when you're trying to watch it, but really that that is the widescreen. It's a full screen presentation. Oh, so okay. it's just yeah. squashed. It's just squashed. Yeah. All right. Okay. Sick. Um, so Chris Nolan talked a little bit a mm. little bit about um the lessons that he learned from Tenet. A little mm. sad Nolan. Yeah. 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 It was it was sad Nolan. And I think a little bit defeated Nolan. Yeah. Um so he said, Warner Brothers released Tenet, and I'm thrilled that it had made almost $350 million, but I am worried that the studios are drawing the wrong conclusions from our release. That rather than looking at where the film has worked well and how that can provide them with much-needed revenue, mm. they're looking at it where it hasn't lived up to pre-COVID expectations, and we will start using that as an excuse, and will start using that 
as an excuse to make exhibition take all the losses from the pandemic instead of getting in the game and adapting or rebuilding our business, in other words. Mm-hmm. Um, so he also said about the future of the industry, he said, long-term movie going is a part of life. I like restaurants and everything else. But right now, everyone has to adapt to a new reality. Yeah. Um, which, which is weird that he says that maybe he's learned some lessons as well, because in the midst of COVID, he was still adamant on Tenet being released. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, had he pushed for a streaming, you know what I mean? Something that a streaming release along with your theatrical, theatrical, where it could be screened written theatrically. Exactly. Yeah. So it's. Like I've read online now that Tenet is due to be released in December, mm. right? How many people are actually saying blind buy? Yeah. Because they haven't seen it. Yeah. They didn't go out to watch it. And I rarely see that on a Nolan movie. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just, it's weird um, that there's a lot of people that haven't seen this massive Nolan movie that was marketed to the shit house with, so many trailers and then um, like, you know, a wide release in yeah. COVID time. Mm. Um, so yeah, hopefully he learns from it too. Yeah. Yeah. This will, um, it'll, uh, it'll test a lot of um, Christopher Nolan's uh, reputation as well. With mm. all these blind buys, like um, the people who adore Nolan and love his film work yeah. um, that haven't seen it. How many of them will actually go out on day one to purchase this digitally? It's yeah. me. I'm people. Because <laughs> <laughs> they they had to make $500 million to break even. Mm. Yeah. And, and they made $350. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That that movie would have easily made. I mean, Mulan made what? How many? 600 million. 600 million. Yeah. That movie would have easily made that, that money back. Big yeah. time. Yeah, because it was what two hundred million to make the film, and then another three hundred on top for fucking marketing or something. Mm. Mm-hmm. Fucking wild shit, man. Yeah, but hopefully it it gets better legs when it comes digitally, which it will. Yeah, I think it'll be a home video hit. I'm there. Uh, it's <laughs> gonna be huge. It's gonna be huge on home video. Like I saw, like the, there's a reviewer that I watch for 4K movies. Um, the what is it called? Films at home. Yeah. Mm. Right. And he, um, he was like, I'm, I'm, I can't wait for this movie. Like it, I, I didn't get to see it at the cinemas. So, and he's, he's based in America. So yeah, mm. he's, he's on board already. All right. Mm. Sick. So moving on It's a Cinemark, mm. right. Which is a, um, it's the third biggest chain in the U S mm. for, mm-hmm. for cinemas. So staying on cinemas, um, they came out and they said that they, they're looking at sort of ditching all of the existing rules around um, the theatrical windows, right? So they, they're looking at sort of figuring it out at a, a film-by-film basis what's going to happen like with the, with the theatrical window. So maybe shortening that window and then having a, a bigger sort of digital window and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Yeah. So it might be akin to um, that universal window that, w- that we've been hearing about where it, it stays out for like two weeks or whatever it is. Yeah. Is it two weeks? 90 it's days. 90 days. Yeah. And then straight to digital. Yeah. Yeah. Which is in these days makes sense. 100%. Yeah. There's no, there's no need to let your film trail off until it's not making as much. Yeah. You're just spending you know money. Mean? Yeah, mm. that's it. Stupid. Wrap it up. Yeah, and just give it to Wrap them at home. Did you know that it's out now on on uh, on streaming services? No, I didn't. You can buy it. It's thirty dollars. Done. Dang. Here's a promo code. That's it. Promo get codes. half off. Do you reckon we'll get a shit ton of those? Yeah. 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 Mm. Hopefully, um, our ISPs here or even all over the world start doing deals for um for digital cinema. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. That'll work. That'd be cool. Yeah. I'd watch. I'd be in like Flynn. <laughs> um, so back in 2018, there was an article written by uh, The Sun in the UK. 
Mm. And it was an article regarding, I guess, the relationship between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Um, upon that occurring, uh, Johnny Depp actually raised a defamation case against the son regarding mm. this back in 2018. Um, so two years later, coming up to present, um, Johnny Depp has now lost that defamation case. Mm. Um, so in the ruling, the judge, Andrew Nichol, uh, said that Depp has now accepted the claims um, of him actually assaulting his wife during that five-year relationship. Um, and in that, uh, Nichol actually says, I've found that the great majority of alleged assaults of Ms. Heard by Mr. Depp have been proved to the civil standard. Um, the claimant has not succeeded in his action for libel. Um, so the article in question, like I mentioned before, was just due to his time on the set of Fantastic Beasts, uh, Crimes of Grindelwald, where he plays the the lead dark sorcerer. Um, mm. Pretty sad to hear, but at the same time, I guess it was something that was meant to happen. And with that ball rolling as well, uh, Johnny Depp is now released um, uh, on Instagram his, I guess, removal from the third film coming out as well. So he's no longer playing that role. Yep. Uh, sorry, I'm pretty sure I had it up here. I do not now. But he released uh, an article on Instagram which basically he apologises for the actions that are taken and regretfully he is rescinding from his role. Yeah. So Warner Brothers asked him, to, to leave the role, yeah. basically fired him. Mm-hmm. Um, but then he, he came back and he said, uh, I will not be remembered for this moment. And I don't think Depp should get caught up in big old roles like that anyway. I don't think that was no. the right role for him. Yeah. Um, this case is, is, is crazy. Um, and I won't, I won't get too much into it. Mm. Um, but Man, there's just got to be there's some there's something that has to be said about women that provoke men um, wanting the reaction of men hitting them. Mm. Like that shit is is wrong. Know what I mean? Yeah, hundred um, percent. And like, I I don't like that sort of behavior. Like pushing people to react. Yeah, like. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, it feels like it, it's all fallen on Depp, but you haven't heard anything from Warners with that same energy about Amber Heard getting fucked off because um, she shit in his bed with her, with her friend. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're, they're not talking about that. They didn't um, say anything about, um, uh, fuck, what's the author's name? J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling and her allegations and, and statements on um, trans women. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like like the energy is is so focused on destroying males. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's how I feel. That's that's the um, impression that this gives me. Mm-hmm. Um there was there was there was evidence from Depp's ex girlfriends and how fucked up is that to have your exes walk in the room and have to give a character reference on how you were in the relationship. Yeah. And they all stated that he never laid a finger on me. So like, I don't know. He is appealing. He will fight the battle again. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, I don't know. I believe Depp in this case, usually I'd like, if, if there's evidence to me that, it looks very much that this dude is like a, a wife beater mm. and, and just a, a unsavory character. I'm definitely there with them, like on the women's side. But on this one, I feel like, like she was gaslighting him into some shit. Yeah. And I, I don't, I don't like the thought of that. Like we're, we're, we're trying to build this, this equal society. Um, but then you want men to turn into fucking cavemen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Know what I mean? I don't, I don't like talking about it. It gets people upset, but like, that's how I see it. Yeah. I'm probably wrong. And you guys will probably tell me if I'm, if I fucked up somewhere, but um, yeah, stop doing that. Women stop doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I feel. 
you know, you're you don't have to get out in the ledge with me. <laughs> no, I, I support you 100%, but I think you've just hit the nail on the head. I have nothing to say after that. Yeah. I feel like we 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 get out in the on the sad Affleck face on this one. I know. Yeah. Like it's it's not definitely not a high note. No. It's yeah. But it is what it is. Sometimes you just have to roll the punches. We do too. Mm. And that was it for uh, for entertainment news. That's it. Yeah. Um we are going to go into what we watched this week. Mhm. What you watch there? Well, we all watched The Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. We're all caught up. Mm-hmm. Episodes one and two, Lukey and Dookie. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant piece of Star Wars. It was, man. Yeah. It was. I I didn't enjoy this week's episode as much as last week's. No. It was it was still really, really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I I loved it. Um, but that first season. Seeing Anakin's pod racer, yep. one of the engines, as a speeder bike yep. was fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, what else did you see? Because you've seen a lot. Seen uh, the old saw, Sarlacc pit. Yeah, you saw the um, the R5 droid that Uncle Owen was going to originally right. buy before R2. There's uh, so many Easter eggs in, in that one. The Boba armor. The Boba armor, the... Yeah. Yeah. Them jetpacking to yep. take that thing out. Yeah. The 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 sand people. The sand the and the um uh the hand signals that yeah. they the sign language that they used yeah. and, and they actually created that for the episode. Beautiful. Um the uh the screen shifting to IMAX ratio. Yep. I don't know if you guys caught that, but it actually expanded to to show you more. Mm-hmm. And that was Favreau's first episode that he directed as well. It's weird, eh? Because he's is. written all of them, yeah? yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So he's more involved this season because he, he's not shooting The Lion King. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good man. It was, it was so good to have the show back, man. Yeah. Like, I've been yeah. fucking hanging. And there, there's still much, so much more to see as well. I know. And then the Boba. Yeah, man. Like, it, it, it finishes up with Boba. Nuts. Beautiful. Good to see Tamara Morrison back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really good to see Timothy Oliphant. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. Oliphant just steals everything he's in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I almost think that Oliphant would be a better Mandalorian. I, I was watching this episode this week and I was like, is that Oliphant? Like, it sounds kind of like him. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if Pedro Pascal's doing an Oliphant impression. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Mm. All right. What'd you guys watch? Friday the 13th, 4, 5, and 6. That's what I watched. It was Halloween, so that's what I watched. <laughs> um, so, yeah, in, in Friday the 13th, 5, which is the new something. New beginning. Yeah, it is the new beginning, actually. Okay. Um, Doug Jones is one of the the cops that is in there. Oh shit! Uh, so he doesn't actually die. He he stays alive. Yeah, but he he is one of those cops, and he's like one of those bumbling cops, right? <laughs> so he's like <laughs> sleeping on the job and shit. And, yeah, eating donuts. Eating donuts. <laughs> and, yeah, but it was cool. It was cool to see him in there. Are you liking the series so far? I like this series. Okay, because, because it, it's the technical aspect of the series that I like. Okay. So how they did the gore and all that sort of stuff and how yeah. they, yeah, it's just cool. Some okay. really good kills in that sixth one. Yeah. Nice kills. Because <laughs> I, I didn't enjoy the Halloween series. Really? I didn't enjoy it. Wow. Yeah. There was, okay. there was flourishes of greatness, but overall, I'm just yeah. like, why is the series so popular? I don't know. Yeah. All right. Did you watch there? Um, so I finished off season one of Overlord and mm. also season two, and now I'm up to season three. <laughs> it's nice. only 13 episodes a season. Okay. All it's right. like 18 minutes an episode. You just fucking pump it. Um, I watched that whole first season of Truth Seekers as well. It's mm. on Amazon. How was that? That was really good. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Was it Was it a good um, reunion for Simon uh, Pegg and Nick Frost? Um, it was, but it was, um, I reckon it's more Nick Frost show than okay. Mm. And so yeah. I'm, was he good in there? Yeah, yeah. it was good. Nice. And so like, it's not very comedy heavy as well. It's actually more horror based. Okay. But it's, it's really cool. But when the comedy beats come through, you fucking piss yourself. <laughs> okay. Like, and do so they swear? Good. 
Yes. Nice. Yeah. That's what I like. It's like full on swearing to full on swearing. Violence. English swearing. Cunt. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> a lot of fucks. A lot of cunt. Fucking. <laughs> Sounds like. Uh, All the hits. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was really good. And then I watched Blade 2 because I watched Blade 1 last week. Blade 2 always had a more artistic flair to it, which I enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Which one do you prefer, watching 1 and 2? Fuck, that's a tough one. I think I prefer Blade 2. Okay. I enjoy Blade 2. Yeah, nice. Um, I watched The Fast and the Furious after hearing the the double cheese and fries for two ninety five line. Had to watch that. I like the toonie here. Bullshit. No one likes the toonie here. Next time, take your ass down to um, Fat Burger where you can get a double cheese and fries for two ninety five. Damn, I'm hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, watched Suicide Squad. First time watching the director's cut. That was really good. And then I watched John Wick. Mm. And because of watching John Wick. And because of watching John Wick, I fucking, I booted up Ninja Assassin right after. Nice. And that's what I was saying to you guys before, that like Ninja Assassin was almost like the blueprint for Wick. Yeah. Mm. Really fucking good. This is one of the first things that 8711 did, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And then I just, out of nowhere, I just got this flash of fucking uh, Ewan McGregor when he turns at the end of Doctor Sleep. And I was like, fuck it, I'm watching that. So I watched that as well. And fuck, that was good watching it again. Was this your first time watching the director's cut? Of Doctor Sleep? Yeah. No, I've, ah, okay. I've only ever watched the director's cut. Nice. Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I did read an article um, after I watched it of the differences. Okay. And that made sense to me as well. Yeah. Especially yeah. how the, the movie's kind of um, segmented. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, it's almost like the, um, you know, when they segment Donnie Darko and the director's cut, it was very uh, jumpy. But yeah. And with this, it worked out so well yeah because it's like the original Mm. um the shining yeah Yeah. but no it was really good i had a very movie and show heavy this week so it was was a heavy (laughs) heavy cinematic flow (laughs) what did you watch um so i i kept it in the greats Mm. the greatest of all time back on my bullshit so i watched the exorcist very good um still scary uh and i watched it during the day i watched forrest gump I, I think Forrest Gump is almost too optimistic to watch it now. But Forrest Gump, like not too optimistic to watch it now, but if Forrest Gump were to come out now, I think people would say it's too optimistic. They'd hate it. Yeah. Mm. Um, but I really enjoyed it. For some reason, the last 45 minutes of Forrest Gump keeps my allergies like just at peak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cause I, I, was, I, I was crying. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Um, there must be something in the digital copy that just sprays out pheromones to make you. you know. <laughs> I, I think I've found my new favorite old school movie. Mm. So I watched this movie called 12 Angry Men with mm. Henry Fonda in it. Yeah. Okay. It's also got, you know, the cop from um, The Exorcist that's investigating. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So he's he's in there. Anyone who tell you you look like Paul Newman. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's, it's got him in there, the whole cast. It's fucking fantastic. I just can't remember it. But it's it's 12 um, jurors that are locked in this room on a hot summer um, afternoon to now decide the fate of this 18-year-old kid. Mm. Um, and it's it, it just takes it in places. And it's all set in one room. Wow. But it's, it's such a good movie and um it starts off with them all saying that the um the decision that they've they've made is that he's guilty and one guy standing up to all of them and reasoning with them Hmm. and it wasn't so much about figuring out if um the kid didn't do it or did do it but if there was a reasonable doubt that he couldn't have done it Mm. but it's so good that the way that they um uh played out and and um show it yeah um i watched chinatown Ooh, chinatown was rough it might have one of the most um uh impressive um like visual effects with uh, the nose yeah because yeah. you see it all yeah like um nicholson gets his nose cut yeah from the inside out and you just see the blood like shoot out yeah but it looks good even though the blood's like paint red yeah um i watched get on up oh yeah what do you think? 
Get On Up was fucking good, man. Yeah. It, ju- it does jump around a bit in the non-linear sort of way that it's told. It does. Um, and it, it's very um, highbrow, like, with the titles. Yeah. Because it's, it's at different points in his life. Mm. Um, but Chadwick nails this role, man. Yeah, it was yeah. unbelievable unreal. seeing Chadwick. And then now watching it, because this is the first time that I watch it, but now watching it and then realizing that he's – he was going through his cancer treatments and surgeries then too. Yeah. Yeah. And the moves and 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 um the All performance the, that he puts dancing in. Dancing and and that's him doing the splits. That's him, yeah. yeah. Like it's insane. It's insane. How good was it when he comes back after he disappears and he starts like singing and he looks older and then he just starts dancing like that? Yeah. <laughs> this buckle was good. Um, and then I, I finished off The Haunting of Bly Manor. Mm. Oh, how was it? That was good, man. Better than the other one? It's different than the other one. I thought season one was so horror-based. Mm. Season two is very emotional. Mm. It's more of a drama horror. Okay. So it's okay. like they're, they're taking like these different sort of um, horror subgenres mm. and then applying it as well. Mm. So like we, get, we we, we kind of get like the um, the straight horror, yeah. the haunted house horror, mm. and then you get like the emotional drama horror. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Really, really liked it. Nice. Yeah. All right. That's it. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Anything else? Want to say? Want to do? All right. You can reach us at Smoke and Mirrors Podcast on Facebook and Instagram. You can also reach us at Logo Smith Media at on YouTube. Um, like, subscribe, do your thing. Um, where we're hitting you Comment, with content, please. Every week, yeah, hit us up with some comments. Mm. Um, or you can reach us at Twitter, where we do most of our shit talking at Smoke and Mirrors Oz. Um, yeah, and that's it from me. Yeah, um, vape more, smoke less, wash your ass, and love movies. Mm-hmm.